All right. Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, come to order. Apologies for the delay in getting started. We had extensive preliminary matters to address before we um, could come out and join the rest of you. Um, before we get started, uh, if you have a cell phone, a pager, um, anything that makes any kind of audible electronic noise, anything that uh, beeps, chimes, plays a ringtone, anything like that, uh, at a minimum, please turn that to a vibrate only position. Uh, similarly, if uh, you have to uh, have a conversation um, with someone close to you, or maybe not someone who's that close to you, um, we'd ask that you take that uh, conversation out the double doors to your rear. The reason for those uh, rules is kind of simple. You'll note that there are a number of microphones that are arrayed around us up here. And those microphones are for the purpose uh, of uh, not only amplification, but also for the purpose of recording these proceedings. And um, cell phones, pagers, and the like going off in the gallery, as well as conversations, interrupt not just the general conduct of these proceedings, but also the recording of these proceedings. Uh, those of you who are sitting uh, forward of the portrait wall um, can see over your shoulders that there are three television cameras mounted on the wall behind you. And there are two television cameras that are mounted on the wall behind us. These uh, proceedings are being uh, recorded and broadcast on the um, city's uh, cable access network. Uh, and so um, disruptions in the gallery from cell phones, conversations, and the like also Excuse disrupt me. that process. Uh, we will be voting at the end of the day. You're certainly more than welcome to stick around and enjoy a civics lesson. But if you have other things to do, such as getting home and building that arc, um, you can go ahead and get started on that and call in in the morning uh, to the Zoning Board office and find out how we ruled. If you take out pen and paper, we can give you the number for the Zoning Board office. I'll read this number off a couple of times. That number is 410-396-4301. Again, that's 410-396-4301. You will, however, need to wait until you receive the formal written outcome of your case, which should be forthcoming in about three to four weeks. We ask that you not uh, build in the, in the city of uh, Baltimore, of course, without first obtaining proper permits, which you cannot do until you receive the uh, outcome of your um, case. Uh, <clears throat> if you've not already done so, if you're here in opposition to any case today, uh, we ask that you please sign in on our signing sheet. Mr. Henry is holding that up. Um, uh, the signing sheet allows us to not only know which cases generally have opposition, but also lets us know who needs to receive those aforementioned written notices I just talked about. Um, so if you're here in opposition, please uh, make sure that you're signed in so that we know how to find you and how to let you know what happens with your case. Similarly, also, if your case gets postponed, we need to let you know uh, when the case um, will be going forward. Uh, the procedure for uh, when we call our cases, if you are the appellant, you'll come forward and stand to my left or your right. Um, the opposition, if any, will stand to my right or your left. And once everyone is up here, um, we will get you sworn in and then we'll uh, first uh, let the appellant go forward and first tell us what the issues are in the case, what it is that they're planning on uh, doing, uh, what uh, um, uh, provide any answers. Um, to any questions uh, asked by the board, and generally present um, their side of things. Uh, once they are done, uh, we'll then turn to the opposition, if any, and they'll be given the opportunity to present their side of things. Finally, we'll go back to the appellant, who will be given the opportunity to give a closing statement and respond to any points brought up uh, by the opposition, um, and uh, conclude at that point won't be going back and forth and back and forth unnecessarily dragging things out and keeping folks here longer into the evening <coughs> than is necessary. Um, <coughs> we will generally call the cases in the order in which they appear on the docket. Um, we will first dis uh, uh, dispense with some preliminary matters. Uh, first, we have a handful of cases which have been postponed for today. These cases will not be going forward. Um, 2014 dash 64, 3600 Clipper Mill Road. The case has been postponed and we're not going forward. Um, so long as you've signed in, we'll let you know when it uh, will be uh, going forward, but it won't be going forward today. 
Um, 2014-507, 231 South Highland Avenue. That case has been postponed. Two thousand fourteen dash five thirty four, eleven eighty one through eighty five Jane Street. That case has been postponed. Two thousand fourteen dash five thirty six, thirty four twenty three through forty nine Noble Street. That case has been postponed. Um, and then finally, uh, two thousand fourteen dash five forty two, ten twenty six Olive Street, and two thousand fourteen dash five fifty. 3425 through 27 Keswick Road. Those cases as well have been postponed. Did you mention that? Uh, we also have uh, yes. 511. 2014 511, uh, 1247 West Lombard Street. That case also has been postponed. So none of those cases will be going forward today. Uh, the next group of cases which we're going to address are the cases which are on our consent agenda. Uh, these cases uh, are those where zoning board staff has reviewed um, the files and the board is satisfied that we have enough uh, information to um, uh, approve these appeals as presented. Uh, you can listen up to see if you are on the consent docket. If you are, the first person on the consent docket will line up here. We're going to call them all as a group so everyone else will line up down the dais behind them. If you can do your best to try to stay in the order in which you're called, that'll help things go a little bit more smoothly. 2014 508, 1909 through 13 Alisana Street, Georgette Stravakis. 2014 512, 3900 Frederick Road, Michael Weiland. 2014-514, 38 East Wheeling Street, Chris Dotson. 2014-516, 2109 Druid Hill Avenue, Calhoun Brothers, LLC, or of Kashif Khan. 2014-519, uh, East Fort Avenue, Stanley Fine. 2014-523, 2525 through 27, Fleet Street, Gina Campbell. 2014-524, 3000 through 3004, East Baltimore Street, the MLMLG Co. LLC, care of Mike Noble. 2014-529, 2437 Fleet Street, Mike Coster. 2014-530, 3114 Faith Avenue, Mike Coster. 2014-531, 1708 West Rogers Avenue, Brantley Davis. 2014-535, 6300 Ivy Mount Road, Lisa Junker. And 2014-540, 2319 East Fairmont Avenue, AB Associates, care of Nate Brittle. Okay, if all those giving testimony can raise their hands to be sworn, please. Okay, <clears throat> first up, 2014-508, uh, 1909 through 13, Alice Ann Street, Georgette St Stavrakis. Mark, for the record, Melvin J. Kansky representing the appellant in this case. Afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, we have this as a uh, application to consolidate the lots to use the entire first floor as a restaurant with accessory outdoor table service in the front and rear courtyard. Is that's that correct? That's correct. Okay. And Mr. French, anything from the planning department? Yes, thank you. Martin French for the Baltimore City Planning Department. The Department of Planning is essentially awaiting a dimension sidewalk site plan for this portion of the seating that would be on the sidewalk in front of this building. The department is uh, in full support of the seating in the courtyard. <clears throat> 
On that basis, upon receipt of an approvable sidewalk site plan, the Department recommends these conditions for the accessory outdoor table service. A minimum of six feet of the sidewalk must remain clear and unobstructed for pedestrian use. The capacity of the outdoor seating area will be not more than the amount of tables and patrons according to a plan approved by the Planning Department. The sidewalk tables will be limited to those that can seat four patrons or two patrons and are to be kept against the wall of the building. There will be no outdoor bar, no outdoor music, jukebox, or other form of entertainment, and all patrons must be excuse me, seated for dining and served by wait staff. Thank you. That's acceptable to the appellant, and um, I'm assuming you have copies of the memorandum, memorandum of understanding from the two community groups. If not, you have them, I find. You do? Okay. Anything further? Nothing further. All right. Zoning board staff having previously reviewed the application and determined that there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, 2014 512, 3900 Frederick Road, Michael Weiland. Good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. We have this as an application to erect a rooftop telecommunications facility with one antenna onto the pump canopy of an existing gasoline service station with convenience store. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Mr. Prince, for the planning department. Thank you. The Department of Planning recommends approval of this appeal subject to these conditions. The antenna and related equipment must be painted to match the building and canopy to ensure they are visually inclusive. The antenna and related equipment will remain mounted as illustrated in the plan and elevation submitted for planning. And the applicant will adequately mitigate any adverse effects as specified in the report of the Historical Architectural Preservation Division of the Department of Planning in accordance with that report's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. And are those uh, conditions uh, acceptable to you? Will that okay. be forthcoming? I'm sorry, I missed is it. Is there anything in addition? No. Okay. That's it. Okay, so that's fine. That's what you already done. Okay. okay. This is acceptable. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything further? No, sir. All right. So, board staff have been previously reviewed the application and determined there's sufficient information to approve you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Have a good day. Next up, 2014 514, 38 East Wheeling Street. Chris Dotson. Uh, actually, Martin Christensen, the owner. Okay, Mr. Christensen. Uh, we have this as an application to construct a first floor rear addition with expanded second and new third floor rear additions. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mr. French, anything for the uh, planning department? The Department of Planning has no comment on this application. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Christensen, anything further you'd like to add to supplement the record? I uh, spoke with my neighbors. They seem to be in compliance and acceptable to what I want to do. Okay. Uh, is that it? That is. Okay. Zoning board staff having previously reviewed your application, we determined that there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 2014 516, 2109 Druid Hill Avenue, Calhoun Brothers LLC, care of Kashif Khan. Yes, sir. Or. Afternoon, Mr. Green. We have this as an application to house two dwelling units at the premises. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Planning department recommends approval of this application. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Green, anything further you'd like to add? Something no, there? sir. All right. Zoning board staff, having previously reviewed your application, we've determined that there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 2014 519, 1215 East Fort Avenue, Stanley Fine. Caroline Hecker. Good afternoon, Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg Martin, on behalf of the applicant. I'm joined by Justin Williams. He's new with our firm here today. Good afternoon. Welcome, Mr. Williams. Um, Ms. Hecker, we have this as an application to use the front portion of the premises known as Building Number Two as a day nursery within a mixed use industrial slash office park. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Mr. French, anything for the planning part? Yes, thank you. <coughs> planning department notes that this property is under 
and is recommending approval of this. There have been uh, design conflicts in the past involving the layout of the parking lot front and back of this property. Therefore, the Planning Department recommends approval of this appeal, provided that the applicant satisfies the off-street parking requirements of the Zoning Code and that the on-site and off-site parking areas which would serve this proposed use receive approval from the Site Plan Review Committee of the Planning Department and that this parking is constructed according to those plans, including provision of shade trees internal to each parking lot. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Hecker, any, uh, any is your client uh, amenable to the conditions stated by the planning department? Yes, but I want to clarify one thing. We did apply also for a parking variance. We are going to short a little bit of parking right now, but there are plans to construct a 600-space parking garage in the rear of the existing building that should be going forward within the next few months. Uh, so it does include a parking variance as well, but that is a temporary decision. Okay. Um, the relocation of the parking spaces that Mr. French was alluding to relates to the relocation of some handicap-accessible spaces that um, are being relocated as a result of the outdoor area for the day nursery. Gotcha. But in all other respects, we are agreeable to their uh, conditions in their report. We, we did factor that uh, parking situation into the uh, consideration for the consent document. And we also have a letter from the Locust Point Civic Association in support of this request. Okay. Anything further? I'd just like to add this to supplement your record. As Mr. Tanner noted, there is a letter in there from the Locust Point Civic Association in support. Mm -hmm. um, letter from Greg Cilio, president of the Locust Point Civic Association, dated today. Is that the one you're talking That's about? That's the one, yeah. yes. Okay. Anything further? That's it. All right. Zoning board staff, having previously reviewed your application, we determined there is sufficient information to, pr to approve your appeal. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Welcome. Thanks. Happy holidays, by the way. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks. Next up, 2014 523, 2525 through 27 at Fleet Street, Gina Campbell. Um, Calling again, 2014-523, uh, 2525 through 27, Fleet Street, Gina Campbell. Okay. Uh, next, 2014-525, 3000 through 3004 East Baltimore Street, the MLMLG Co. LLC, care of Mike Nofel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. We have this as an application to subdivide the existing lot into three lots and subdivide the existing structure into three attached single family dwellings. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Yes, thank you. Because this is a proposed subdivision, it requires approval by the Planning Commission. Therefore, the Department of Planning recommends approval of this appeal, subject to the condition that the, uh, the subdivision proposed receives approval from the Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Noble, is that uh, condition, uh, like this, are those conditions acceptable to you? Yes, sir. All right. Was there anything further you'd like to add to supplement the record? Uh, no, sir. All right. Then in that case, Zoning Board staff, having previously viewed video application, we determined there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. You too. Happy holidays. 2014 529 2437 Fleet Street, uh, Mike Coster. Yes, sir. Afternoon, Mr. Coster. Also Good. call with this 2014-530-3114 uh, uh, Fate Avenue, uh, which is also Mike Coster. Mr. Coster, we have as to both of these appeals, um, they are um, uh, appeals to construct a two-story rear addition with a rear rooftop deck. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Mr. French, anything for the Planning Department? Planning Department has no comment on either application. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Coster, um, anything further you'd like to add to some of the record? Yes, sir. All right. So, any board staff having previously reviewed application, we determined there is sufficient information to approve your appeals. Very good. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Next up, 2014 531, 1708 West Rogers Avenue, Brantley Davis. Welcome, gentlemen. 
um, Mr. Uh, Davis, we have this as an application to construct a two-story addition and parking lot onto an existing hospital. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Mr. French. Thank you. The Department of Planning recommends approval of this appeal subject to compliance with afforestation and other requirements that are being established by the Site Plan Review Committee. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Davis, uh, is that condition uh, acceptable to your client? Yes. All right. Was there anything further you would like to add to something in the record? All right. We did get a letter from the Mount Washington Improvement Association also in support. Okay. We have that in the record? Yeah. Okay. Um, zoning board staff, having previously reviewed your application, we've determined that there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Happy holidays. Next up, 2014 535, 6300 Ivy Mountain Road, Lisa Junker. Hi. Afternoon, Ms. Junker. Hello. We have this as an application to construct a one story side addition and three story side addition and third floor front addition onto the premise. Is that correct? Not correct. Okay. What um, do we have wrong? It's detailed. It's a rear one story addition, it's a front three story addition, and it's a rear third story addition. But for your comfort level, I'm also able to provide communications confirmed with the community association as well as um, updates with surrounding property owners. So they're very clear about what our proposed additions are. And if you need to, I can show you the written application that I have submitted just for your verification that it was accurately filed as well. And we have that okay. in the phone. The, it's an unusual shape. It's a regular, everything's uh, a regular. lot with an, an angle of the structure is uh, different, so, but you're complying with the plans that you submitted. That's correct. I just wanted to make sure semantically we are saying the same thing. As long as the plans haven't changed. Plans are in coordination with the words that you used. Yeah. But I just wanted to make sure specifically that. Uh, okay. Okay, so then said again, um, it's an application to construct a rear one story addition, a three story front addition, and a third floor rear addition. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thanks for clarifying the record. Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Planning department makes no comment on this application. All right. And Ms. Junker, anything further you would like to add to supplement the record? All right. <laughs> Zoning board staff, having previously reviewed the application, we determined that there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Happy holidays. You. Last, 2014-540-2319 uh, East Fairmont Avenue, AB Associates, care of Nate Prettle. Afternoon, Mr. Prettle. We have this as an application to construct a new three-story attached single-family dwelling with rooftop deck and lower-level rear garage. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Mr. French, anything from the Planning Department? Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Prettle, anything further you would like to add? So just a little bit. No, I don't want to presume anything, but with the next one, which is part of the same development, the mm -hmm. item also? Um, we had someone who signed in on that. Um, if you want to check and see who it is, reach out to them. Maybe you can get something resolved. Okay. okay. Uh, anything other than that? Okay. Zoning board staff, having previously reviewed application, we determined there was sufficient information to approve your appeal. Great. Thanks. Happy holidays. Uh, 2014 okay. <clears throat> the remainder of the docket consists of cases which include cases where opposition has signed in and frequently we have found that opposition is the result of either a lack of communication or a miscommunication between the parties and it can be useful to offer the parties an opportunity to have a dialogue amongst themselves to see if they can't come to some sort of a resolution obviously if two um, uh, if two parties um, approach the board uh, from opposing points of view and ask the board to resolve the dispute someone is assured to be disappointed in the result and this is your opportunity to avoid that um, you're certainly not um, 
uh, required to take the opportunity to speak uh, with uh, your opposition, um, but we certainly do um, encourage and appreciate it. <clears throat> I'll read off the cases where we have opposition, which is signed in. Um, I'll ask you just simply to stand where you are, offering your opportunity to speak with one another. Um, if you would like to speak with, another, with one another, see if you can talk things out, see if you can come to some sort of a resolution. Just um, step out the double doors to your rear, and once you are uh, ready to proceed, just come back in, let us know, and we'll um, get you back in in turn. If you're not able to get um, something worked out, you can have a seat, and we'll call you in turn. Um, first case where uh, we have opposition that's signed in is 2014-166. 4030 West Garrison Avenue, Shacomba Phipps. Who signed in on that? Okay. And have you folks uh, spoken? Yeah, I'm going to speak. I mean, I'm the same representative of the Neighborhood Association. Okay. Um, any prospect or desire for a continued dialogue? See if you all can't come to some sort of agreement. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, sir, I thought this was settled at the last. Uh, meeting and then I get a call from somebody here and say we have another hand. I, I mean, I, this is the fourth time I've been down here. Um, so would you like to have a dialogue with the applicant? Or would you not? To be perfectly honest, you, I've been here since 1245. I have to have a meeting. I have to care for I have to be here at 2.30. But my only thing I want to say is this. The only reason why I thought that they told me we was down here because some lady lived in the neighborhood said the sign wasn't right. But this decision was already made at the last meeting. So I don't understand why well, we're so going to First question. Sir, are you here in opposition to the applicant? Yes. Okay. Um, if you would let me. <clears throat> the issue, as I understand it, is that um, uh, community members had complained that the sign had not been posted properly prior to the last hearing. So um, in order to do things properly, we required the applicant to repost the property and we would reschedule the hearing so that anyone who was, who had anything that they wanted to say um, would have notice of the hearing and would be able to attend. Um, if you yourself don't really have anything more that you would like to add. You don't have to do that. Um, if any of the folks who are here who are also standing up would like to have a dialogue with the applicant, you can do that. The purpose of this right now is we're not calling the hearing right now. So as I said, everyone can just stand where they were. But would you all like to have a dialogue to see if you can resolve whatever the issues are between you? That's a yes or no question. Okay, all right, have a seat. We'll call you in turn. 2014 dash 5 dash uh, 358, uh, 47 and a half through 15 Harford Road, Javon Spence. Okay, um, folks, want to have our dialogue? See if you can't get things resolved. No. Okay, have a seat. We'll call you in turn. Are you, do you want to have a dialogue? Or? Well, we are, are, I represent Walkerson, which is one of the neighborhoods, and we have had a dialogue. Here's your opportunity. So, who's the applicant? Okay, would you like to speak with them? Yeah. See if you, okay. So, why don't you folks just step outside and you can talk it out and see if you can't come to an agreement. Next question is 2014-364, 35 North Potomac Street, Luis Vasquez. Okay, who's already, on that? Okay. Oh, you've already talked? Yeah, Mr. Vasquez and I have had a conversation. Okay, and were you able to come to a resolution? Yeah. You were? To some degree. I mean, my question is about the actual zoning <coughs> code enforcement, um, the, the, the time spent as an MP property. Okay. Um, have a seat and we'll call you in turn and we can get into it then, okay? okay All right. 
2014-517-2500 West Cold Spring Lane, Verizon Property Group, LLC, care of Kashif Khan. Next, 2014-527, 2305 Pressbury Street, Mohammed Naeem. Okay, and have you folks um, spoken? No, you have not? Yeah. We did not receive a chance to um, have a conversation before uh, this hearing. Okay. Um, if you would like, you can just step out the uh, double doors to your rear, see if you can talk sure. things through and come to a resolution. Okay. Yeah, as I understand, there hasn't been a dialogue before, so here's your opportunity. I would remind all in the room that, as I had said, that if two folks are on opposite sides and you want the board to resolve your dispute, one of those sides will be disappointed. I will guarantee you that. <clears throat> so, but here's an opportunity to have a dialogue and see if you can reach a resolution. You're not obligated to, it's just an attempt to. Excuse me, there was a dialogue with someone in the community about the same that we are in our position. So there was a dialogue. The, the applicants are here. The applicants. Folks, dialogue. folks, I'm not going to have a dialogue from here. I'm asking you question whether or not you would like to have a dialogue. The applicant is standing saying that they would like to speak with you. Okay, thank you. Have a seat. Thank you. All right, and 2014 541, 2321 Fairmont Avenue. Yes, we just spoke in the hall, and um, I think I alleviated all his concerns. He actually just left. So. Oh, that was okay. on the consent yeah, yeah. Okay. That was on the consent yeah. So, um, Mr. Perl, you've already been sworn, so we'll call your case. 2014-541-2321 East Fairmont Avenue, AB Associates, Chair of Nate Perl. Uh, Mr. Perl, we have this as an application to construct a new three-story attached single-family dwelling with new pump deck in lower level of your garage, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, previously, there was someone who had signed in in opposition um, to this case. Presenting that you had a dialogue with that person? He was concerned that if anything were to be uh, bumping out into the alley right there, he was on Montford Avenue behind that, and I guess he has car access. And basically, he represented that we weren't building into the city right of way at all, and he was comfortable with that. Okay, uh, Mr. French, anything you uh, anything you'd like to say for the uh, planning department? Planning department has no comment on this application. All right, and Mr. Predel, anything further? No. Okay, so any board staff having previously reviewed your application, we've determined there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right, <clears throat> first case we'll call is 2013 418 916 North Broadway, 722 Duncan LLC, care of Om Tshand. Afternoon. Good afternoon. You're Mr. Tshand? Yes. Okay. We have this as an application to use the first floor as a delicatessen and continue the remainder for a one dwelling. Is that uh, correct? Actually, uh, this application was originally for a uh, deli. Uh, when we spoke to uh, con council member uh, Carl Stokes and the association president uh, Eric Booker, so and uh, the community support, uh, we, uh, the community was. Uh, in need of a, a beauty salon rather than a deli. Uh, I would like this to be, request this to be amended to a, uh, a beauty, beauty salon. salon, yes. Okay, so. And, uh, Mr. Booker supported that too. Okay, and so then <coughs> uh, the application is to use the first floor as a beauty salon 
continue the remainder uh, for a uh, for one dwelling. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Raise your hand and please be sworn. Please swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I will. Okay, sir. If you can come on down. David Brown uh, here, uh, representing Councilman Carl Stokes in opposition of both the deli and the beauty salon. Okay. Um, do we have staff reports? Planning Department notes this property is located in the Gay Street One Urban Renewal Plan area. It is listed in that plan as a property that is designated for acquisition disposition for rehabilitation or redevelopment in that plan and the applicant is accordingly cautioned. However, the department has no objection to this appeal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Sean, um, why don't you tell us about what um, you're planning here and if also you can address the issue of the use of the property, um, particularly um, any um, period of vacancy of the building. Yeah, the, the, the property has been built in 2010. And uh, uh, so right now it's uh, impossible to uh, turn it back to a residential because it's already the first floor is uh, con built as a, uh, as a commercial space with two, two hour fire rating, fire alarms and all those stuff. Um, and, uh, and it has no uh, windows uh, to build a bedroom there, uh, whatever the suggestion. But when I went, uh, I met uh, uh, the, associ the community president on Sunday, uh, Mr. Eric Booker. He supported it, and that's where Mr. Uh, Brown is aware that uh, we were referred to him. And when I spoke to him, he was supporting it. And he, I'm, he's not here present uh, uh, personally, but uh, uh, he said they will need amenities. And as far as my bad practices, business practices, I am not aware of anything, any wrongdoing. And uh, I mean, that's something that uh, I am really surprised to hear that my bad practice, the only bad, bad practice that probably I have done is I have converted that, uh, to, uh, that uh, mm, old property into a new property. And uh, it's, I mean, you picture, picture speak for itself. And any other, I'm, Mr. Brown, I met him last time here and he was opposing to a grocery store we decided that we're going to go forward with a deli and uh, after that uh, my all attempts to meet mr brown or mr stokes uh, were never successful uh, whatever the reason behind it is god knows when you purchased the property when i purchased it in 2010 i believe okay and at that time um it looks like, um, well, at that time, was the property occupied or was it unoccupied? No, it was, an, um, it, it was un unoccupied for years. Okay. Uh, 
Um, can we keep this as a part sure. of the record? Or you need that? Okay. All right. So it had been unoccupied for some amount of time when you purchased it. Yeah. After I built it, because it was all uh, the perm first, I didn't find a, a right tenant for it. When I found a tenant, then uh, uh, council member's office objected to a grocery store, which I voluntarily uh, uh, actually withdraw my application, and I really wanted to be honestly come to an agreement. Uh, and then when I found a Delhi tenant, then it was uh, suggested by the zoning board that it should be uh, reapplied for. And uh, later on, before we come to the zoning board back, we tried to get a support from the community, and uh, we realized that there was more support for uh, for a, a beauty salon than uh, for a uh, uh, for a deli. So we contacted some of the people there, and in the neighborhood, we supported our effort for a beauty salon. Okay. Um. Now, your application in 2012, you said, was withdrawn for the delicatessen. Yeah, that was, that was because we, I was planning to add a grocery, and Mr. Brown objected to it. And we went outside, and we spoke that we're going to uh, have n not add a grocery store, and we're going to have uh, only a deli. But later... Did the deli ever, was the deli ever operating? No. After you... Um, no, because we, ne we never got approval from the zoning board. Uh, I thought that in the in um, 2011 there was the approval for the delicatessen. Yeah, but that was the, when the time the building was being built, and I, we, we couldn't find the right tenant for it. Okay, so they so your approval had lapsed. Yes, it expired. March 25th, 2013, of the board The yes. president of the uh, yes. I I have an email from him, but not really. July 2014, Mr. Booker, also to Mr. Woolman, writes, good morning, I just read the email, I haven't looked at docs yet, but this sounds like a go. I will present at the board at this month's meeting to get feedback. Personally, I like the salon idea. Okay, but there's no um, updates from, from- Nothing directly from the association. Yes, and nothing follow, following, I guess, the, um, was it presented to the uh, membership, the community association Actually, at some point? That's, that's he well, he says that he is, well, he said, I guess coming out of it, uh, he says that the beauty salon proposal says went over better than the other ideas, but yeah. there's no um, indication of if there was a vote in support or when, 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 when I when I met him on on set on Sunday two days ago uh, he stated that he thought we already have his support but I said no we didn't have anything in writing or whatever and then 
he said there will be no opposition when you go there. Okay. All right. Would you like to take a look at this? Okay. All right. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Sir? Uh, Mr. Ohm, we've met with uh, on. If you could just state your name again for the record, please. David Brown, Councilman Carl Stokes' office. Uh, uh, and let me say, I, I, I have no position on it. I'm representing the councilman. Indeed. Uh, the councilman and I had had several meetings with Mr. Ohm. No, uh, we, I never met Mr. Ohm. Just, just, we yeah. met with Mr. Ohm. We met with Councilman, uh, Council President Jack Young, uh, who also Mr. Ohm has gone before. We've met with uh, Eric Booker, who is the president of the New Broadway East Community Associations, and all have agreed that uh, Mr. Ohm has not been a good, uh, a good neighbor he has other businesses that are in the community. He says he doesn't. Uh, other businesses have had violations, and, um, and the councilman has decided that he doesn't want to support it. When he said that Mr. Booker supports him, I spoke with Mr. Booker this morning who said that he didn't support it. Um, there's no letter of support from any community association. For the three years that we've met with him, uh, we couldn't come to any type of an agreement. Um, the, he's had numerous violations and lapses in time. He's been there for a long time. And uh, as a result, uh, he has not shown good faith. His attorney contacted us on Monday, his former attorney, and said that he wasn't going to support the issue because he suggested that he not come and that he either request a postponement or occupied as residential and Mr. Ohm didn't agree to that and so as a result the attorney backed out and decided that he would not show up today and so he he told us uh, in advance that he would not be here but uh, Mr. Ohm decided to represent himself which of course he has that option to do so but uh, Councilman Stokes wanted to be here today to to further discuss it uh, in detail but he was not able to be here today, so. Understandable. And is there a position um, as to uh, uh, any period of vacancy or um, discontinuance of use? Yes, it's been, it's been that way since 2010. Uh, and it's just been completely vacant. And uh, we, we couldn't get him to, to move on it. He's, he's been grabbing at straws trying to find different uh, occupancies and different uses for the property, uh, none of which uh, fit to that community. Uh, as you know, the community has changed tremendously. Uh, the need for uh, certain businesses in that community are no longer the same. Uh, the corner store, the delicatessen, uh, those things are no longer needed. We're trying to get a major supermarket to move into the area. Uh, and as you know, it's uh, uh, you know, right on the cusp of the EB, EBDI district, and uh, we're trying to turn it into a prime community. Uh, it's a mixed-use community with market-rate housing uh, and some low-income housing, but mostly market-rate. And uh, we don't need the stress of, uh, of having a, another delicatessen turned grocery store uh, occupied by um, drug dealers or or other vagrants, not saying that they all have to be dealing drugs, but we don't need that kind of stress on the corner. Well, given that the, um, um, the improvements were made, and it looks like it's, at least from the photographs, it looks like it's built out to be a commercial space. It's got the handicap access um, in order to be compliant. Um, and we haven't seen any um, drawings or photographs of the inside, but I'll take the representation that it's built um, f to be occupied for commercial use. Um, <clears throat> I'll imagine that the community wouldn't want this vacant space sitting there. Um, is there uh, any position to take as far as use that you would like to see there that would be more acceptable? Yes. Um, when we met with Mr. Ohm, uh, the councilman discussed possibly office residents. Uh, where the first floor could be occupied by some type of office space, uh, and they would be amenable to that. But um, on the from a from a business standpoint of just uh, selling, you know, 
groceries or other personal well, goods out of the store. Uh, he changed it to um, the current applications for a beauty salon, um, which at least from the communications um, that uh, were submitted by um, the applicant, um, now they certainly were from some months ago, um, but it appeared to indicate um, a positive reaction from Mr. Booker and Mr. Booker um, in his uh, correspondence seemed to indicate that there was a positive reaction uh, amongst the community <coughs> members following the, uh, the community association meeting where the idea of a beauty salon was presented. Um, is there, uh, do you know of any stance as far as? When, when, the, the, board, when the board met to take a vote on it, they voted it down unanimously. Um, so. They voted down the beauty salon? The beauty salon, yes. They said, you know, office is what they would accept. Yeah, which board? Um, New Broadway East Community Association. Okay. Is there any record of that? Uh, no, but um, I thought Mr. Booker would be here. Because you mentioned there's no letter of support. I would not see any well, I, I knew he didn't have a letter of support because they well, voted no, it down. We're also not seeing any letter of opposition. And typically yes. when we have, um, you know, where there's, Community association takes a stand one way or the other. They follow it up. They document it somehow or another. That you know, either they say that you know, we considered it, we heard the proposal, and you know we voted. This is what the vote was, and you know, we don't support it or we do support it. Otherwise, is it the, is it the councilman or councilman's stance that uh, they're representing the community association? Well, the councilman has taken a stance completely against it. Right, but is but is it his stance today that he's representing those community associations? Uh, no. Um, May I add? Uh, just, um, just a moment, let me can, uh, finish up, Mr. Brown. Um, okay, I think I'm sad. Was there any other questions? Okay. Uh, first of all, I have never met Mr. Stokes. I don't even know if he comes in front of me, I will not recognize him. Secondly, I have never met Mr. Jack Yank. He will come in front of me. I, I have seen his pictures in newspapers, but we have never spec, never met him. I don't know where Mr. Brown coming from, that we spoke and we met him. Thirdly, every time I tried to get an appointment from Mr. Stokes, spoke over the phone Mr., uh, with Mr. Brown, and he uh, promised that he's going to call me back. I never received a call from back, never, ever. Finally, I had to... Um, uh, ask the help of an attorney who can talk to them. Thirdly, I do not have any business in Baltimore City. I have real estate. I am a software developer working for a company where I am a, actually uh, a SharePoint architect. Do not have any business of retail. I, I do have real estate. And three of the real estates which were vacant vacant to value. All of them have been turned to a nice, pretty buildings. All three were nicer than this, and I don't know where this personal stand against me comes that I am a bad person. If somebody comes to Baltimore, converts three vacant to value buildings into nice, I, I can show anybody from the zone, anybody from the audiences, come and see inside the house how beautiful they are made. If this is a bad practice, then just tell us, tell us, get out of Baltimore. Do, do you currently have, uh, there is no, do you, do you have a salon tenant? Do you yes, he is there. That? Do you have a contract with the salon tenant? Yes. I mean, she is waiting since, since June or July, on? and she can, she can testify she's a licensed uh, beautician. And uh, my, my, my conversation with, has, with her has always been that she is going to turn it into a nice salon. I know the value of the neighborhood. Then that's why I, I turned that building from that situation to that situation. Even the city itself has, has converted and renovated buildings. None of them. This is the most beautiful building in that block. And this is the only store from Fells Point to North Avenue which has a, uh, a disability access. Um, and if this is considered bad practice, then just let us know, find, another, find yourself another city. 
how um, the, the you said that you purchased the property in 2010, 2011. Yes. Um, and then you said about um, rehabilitating it. Um, there was the approval in 2011 for the delicatessen, um, but then there was a long period where um, I guess you were trying to look for a tenant. Yes. Um, and what were your efforts uh, in that regard? I hired real estate agents to rent it. I put a sign on that building. I had multiple people coming and applying f and willing to have a deli. When I interviewed them, and the only, I mean, they, they were mostly not qualified, but I was looking at, they want, I wanted to have something uh, nice. I contacted Subway, I contacted Starbucks, I contacted, uh, uh, later on, uh, actually UPS store was interested to come in, but the person who was their franchisee or, and willing to make it a UPS store, he was disqualified by UPS for some reason, so they did not open. And so I, I was back to the, to the point one where uh, I was uh, going to have it at Delhi. And then when I heard from the, from the, from the community uh, that there was more support for the salon, so that young lady contacted me and I, 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 I personally saw her license. I saw her store where she was and how she was maintaining it and keeping it, she, where she was working. Uh, when Mr. Brown said that the, the council in, un, unanimously rejected it, if the council unanimously rejected it, Mr. Brown, why does the council president write it rent better? Unanimously rejected means... Well, keep means, your comments directed towards yeah. the Unanimously means no objection. But in this case, he, he says it went better. At least there was one vote in report. In, one vote in favor, which does not mean unanim okay. unanimous. Okay. Is there any potential for further I would definitely like to know what Mr. Carl Stokes and Mr. Brown have against me personal. Well, it sounds like it's, um, it sounds like as, as is a politician's job, it sounds like they've been representing um, constituents in the area who have been um, uh, opposed to the idea of um, of your being there, um, but uh, were there any other questions at this point? Okay, thank you very much, John. Thank you. Have a good holiday, by the way. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> next. Um, 2014, we're gonna skip a little bit. 2014, that's 371, uh, 116 West Hamburg Street, John Garner. How's it going? How are you? 2014-371. Okay, Mr. Garner, we have this in application to construct a three-story corner attached single-family dwelling with rooftop deck accessed from stair penthouse and rear off-street parking space. Is that correct? Actually, I uh, amended the application on, uh, I guess, I think November 5th to include the one parking spot variance uh, in lieu of a curb cut being denied and the appeal kind of being dead in the water. Okay. So you, okay, so you're taking off the parking space? That's correct. Okay. All right, uh, is that, uh, do I have it right in all other respects? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, if you can raise your hand and be sworn, please. Mm -hmm. 
you swear or affirm the testimony of the truth after giving this hearing, it will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, do we have staff reports? The Department of Planning was originally fundamentally uh, opposed to the concept of the parking space because it was also opposed to the concept of the curb cut, which the applicant is well aware. And the planning department is pleased that the applicant decided to drop the issue of trying to provide parking on the site. And therefore, it was actually supported with the concept of the building and supported parking. Okay. Separately, the planning department notes that this property is located within the Baltimore City Historic District, and therefore all of the architectural details of the proposed structure must be approved by the Commission for Historical and Architectural Planning. Uh, architectural Preservation, I apologize. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Garner, why don't you tell us uh, what you are proposing to do here? Uh, it's a pretty simple uh, three-story row house. Um, it's exists right now. It's a corner lot, and there are three other three-story houses on the block. Um, and a church backs up to it, so we're kind of the only houses there, the only residential properties facing south on Hamburg. There, um, it's yeah, just pretty, you know, pretty simple, standard three-story row house. Um, I had a pre-development meeting with Mr. French, as well as a woman from Chap and another woman from Planning. I, I think Anita and Caitlin, I believe, or Alex and Caitlin, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of working through uh, specifically what they'd like to see uh, with what I had originally proposed um, before that meeting, and uh, I'm going to try to come to terms on you know, what's best for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Looks like your building height pushes you just over the 35 foot restriction. Yes, we're trying to uh, match the elevation of 110 West Hamburg Street. Um, 112 and 114 have pitched roofs, uh, but kind of, so kind of like a bookend almost. So 110 and 116 would have uh, this traditional flat roof row house look. Um, you can kind of see in that photo there, I guess. Yeah. Um, you can't shave the um, height down to be within 35 feet? I mean, I could probably adjust the height, but I think it would look weirder if it didn't match the one on the other. You know what I mean? Like, I was kind of, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's probably a way to make it work. I haven't. The um, what's your um, ceiling heights in the? I believe it's eight, eight, and nine, um, but I'd have to double check that. But yeah, I mean, there's probably a way to come down to 35. It's just that I would think it would look weirder to me uh, having, you know, out of four houses, having three different heights as opposed to just two. I don't know. Okay. Um, any questions? No. All right. The only other thing I would like to submit is um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of lot coverage I want now that I really have no need for a patio. Um, so I just wanted to update the application and I. I sent this in December 1st, but I'm not sure if it made it into the file. Um, it was just sure kind of an increased lot coverage. Um, until I come up with a final design, I mean, I don't want to limit myself to, I think, 65%, which is what I originally proposed. Um, that wouldn't really make sense to pigeonhole like that without, you know, having, having it needed for parking. Um, well, um, 
In other words, it's just to maximize my flexibility in what I can uh, agree to with chat. I tried to print out what you sent me. Yeah. yeah this is what I got. It cut it off. But well, we got the measurements, I think, correct. 60 feet. Dwelling. 20 feet worth of patio. Yeah, I think that we've got this, but we can make it part of the record. Okay. okay. Anything further? Uh, no, that's everything. All right. Thank you. Yep, appreciate it. Next, uh, 2014 that's 502, 3800 Bell Avenue, Aaron Stefina, Stefianos. Okay, um, Mr. Stefianos? Yeah. Okay, and you are, sir? I'm Alexander Lane of Lema, L E M A hyphen Kenzo, K E N Z O, and J Lema Company, 228 East 25th Street. It's an accounting company. Okay. An accounting firm. okay. If you guys can come on this side. <laughs> oh. There we go. Okay. Um, and we have this as application to continue to use the first floor as a grocery store? Yes. All right. If you can raise your hands and be sworn, please. Be swear or affirm testimony. Yes. All right. Do we have staff reports? I have nothing. Yes. Thank you. Planning department notes this property is a residentially zoned area, and therefore the department recommends disapproval of this appeal unless the nonconforming use of the property has not been discontinued or abandoned. Thank you. All right. And why don't you, um, who will be, I guess, doing the speaking. Oh, I, I can. Okay. Um, and your name again was? Alexander. Is it Lima Kenzos? Yeah, Alexander Lima Kenzos. Just didn't want to mess up the pronunciation is all. Um, if um, you could tell us what it is that you're proposing here and particularly if you can also include okay. in your discussion um, the, uh, uh, the concern raised by the planning department regarding um, abandonment or any discontinuance of the use. Why does the planning department disapprove it? Is there a reason why? What is the reason? Mr. French? The reason is in the residential zoning uh, district, commercial uh, use is considered a non-conforming use. If the commercial use was there before 1971, when the current zoning code took effect, it's allowed to continue indefinitely as a non-conforming use. Mm -hmm. But if it is if that commercial use is closed for more than 12 consecutive months, it's considered discontinued and abandoned. Okay. So the critical question in front of the board is, has that commercial use of the property continued basically without a break prior to your coming in I thought, front of I the board? I thought it was two years. They told me if it was two years, it had to be less than two years. That's what I was told. I believe the board can grant you an extension of that time, of that 12 months. But fundamentally, the, the important thing is, has there been a, an extended period of vacancy? If there has, then the nonconforming use may have been abandoned. I mean, there was an extended, but it was. That's for you to tell oh, them. Okay. Well, yes. So as I said, if you can discuss the history of the use of the property, including any period of discontinuance or abandonment. And so if you can explain, give some context to that, uh, and then you know, tell us what it is you're proposing to do now, that'll help us sort of figure things out. Okay. There was this. The, um, there wasn't any dis discontinued use. It's just there wasn't any permits filed on behalf of the former tenant. And when my client came aboard and signed a lease with the um, the landlord, he was made unaware that you know any um, current permits needed to be pulled. Like he was, he was unbeknownst of 
the current situation of this um, property. Like there were people in there um, before my client and um, they just didn't pull any permits on this property. And they still operated the business and there's no opposition in the community. Nobody's here, so in opposition of my client having a grocery store there. Okay, so. Um, and the building is made for commercial use. And Mr. Hubbard, the building owner, isn't here? No, he's in Virginia. He lives in um, 13. Well, I can see that he lives in Virginia, but yes. he is not present today. To I, didn't know to I, did, I didn't know that he needed to be here. I would have made, made a phone call. Um, I was unaware that, you know, his presence was needed. But I don't think he'd be able to show up because, you know, he works and he's in a different state. But it was made unaware that, you know, to my client that, you know, of the current situation that we faced. That's why when I went down to um, 417 East Do you Fayette know Street, how long the prior use had been there? The prior tenants before him? Mm -hmm. um, like about a couple of years, a year, a couple of years or so. I know um, in 2012, but since then they didn't pull any legal permit. They just operated illegally, and the, they didn't pull any. They didn't pull any permits properly. So when I went down to properly pull the permit for my client, that's when I was made aware of the situation. So um, we looked at the permit history, and the last actual permit was issued in 2009. There were. Um, there was a fire permit. Glenn, please finish. Well, there were permit applications filed uh, for the continued use, but they never got issued in, in that. They don't have a date either, but it was um, filed in 2010, also in 2012. So that's basically all we could find on the in the permit history of it. I think we included that in the, the ones with circles on it are the ones I'm referring to. Okay. <laughs> so when your client um, Signed a. Um, uh, does he have a Do you have the signed lease? lease? Do you have the lease with him? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I don't need to necessarily see it right now, but when he signed the lease, there was another tenant who was in the space still. Um, I believe so. Okay. And that other tenant, you believe, um, was operating in there the entire. Um, I, guess, uh, I think you said a uh, year or two. Yeah, I'm not quite sure of, of like, you know, the time frame, but I know that before my client came in, there was another tenant in there, and they were just operating illegally. So it was just made, it just wasn't made aware by the landlord. Um, he didn't make him aware that, you know, you can't use this property or you can't pull any permits. Like, you know, had I known, I would have told him, but, you know. He just didn't know, and um, it's made for commercial use. There's no opposition in the community, and I mean, I don't see what the problem would be. Okay. Right. I can understand there's some opposition in the community, or someone opposing it in the, in the community. Um, all right. Any other questions? Thank you. Is that it? Yeah. You guys didn't want to see the lease or anything like that? Um, don't really. You don't need to, to see the least that much. No. Okay. All right. Thank you very right, much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 2014-364, 35 North Potomac Street, Luis Vasquez. Luis Vasquez. Okay. Was there anybody else here on this? Nope. 
Isn't there a gentleman? There was a gentleman here, but I think he left. Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Vasquez, we have this as an, as an application to use the first floor as a restaurant and carry out food shops. Is that yes, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. If you can raise your hand and be sworn, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to this hearing will be the truth all the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Do we have staff reports? Yes, we have uh, five letters from residents. Uh, they write, Mr. Vasquez has blatantly violated the housing code when he allowed contractors to do structural work on the property without a permit. Item two, there is no neighborhood need for a carryout as there are several other carryouts within two blocks. They go on to list the addresses. The third item, after the appellant requested to transfer a liquor license to 35 North Potomac, and it was denied by the liquor board. The appellant approached the PPNA about opening a restaurant and carryout at this location. The association made it very clear that we would need to see a legitimate business plan from the appellant before deciding whether or not to support the zoning change. The appellant has not submitted these, had not submitted these plans until Sunday, October 19th, in which, which they were very vague on details. One of the letters notes that uh, a neighbor who lives across from 35 North Potomac testified at the May 15, 2014 Liquor Board hearing that the previous business that occupied this building, the Potomac Tavern, closed in 2009. Since 35 North Potomac through the zone R8, the non-conforming use was abandoned in 2010. They go on to put the zoning code. Therefore, the BNZ is not authorized to establish a non conforming use. Uh, they complain about this property in regards to trash. The owner has been terrible about cleaning the property, particularly in the front area. There have been mice and rats. They have been open until midnight, which means loud patrons outside. Needless to say, people would need to pull up and park to get food. Parking would be a problem. We also have a letter from Councilman Kraft indicating that he supports the community's request for a postponement so that the community may receive a review of this information. That's October. Okay. And we have planning's report. Thank you. Planning department noted that this property is residentially zoned, therefore the commercial use of the property is a non-conforming use. The department notes that this application has two parts. One is for a restaurant and one is for a carryout food shop. Because a carryout food shop is not listed in a B1 uh, district as a permitted or conditional use, the board is not authorized to change the use of this property to a carryout food shop. Therefore, <clears throat> the Department of Planning recommends disapproval of the portion of this appeal relating to the carryout food shop because that use is not a use to which a non-conforming use in a residential zoning district may be changed. The Department has no objection to approval of changing the non-conforming use to a restaurant if the applicant demonstrates that non-conforming use of the property has not been discontinued or abandoned. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Vasquez. Yes. Um, <coughs> Why don't you um, tell us a little bit about what you are um, okay. about the proposing property? here, okay. um, and if you can also try to incorporate into that um, uh, a response to the points put up by the planning. Board. Okay. Well, first of all, the property it was going to be a bar the last year. The property being inspected by the fire department, health department, Baltimore city inspector to approve as a bar when I was applied for a license, liquor license. Then they deny me. They might decide to put a carryout shop and a restaurant in there. I spoke to the community. The president of the community, really, he don't got nothing against, against that because I told him today, he called me today at 12 o'clock. He said, I ain't gonna be there, except up to the neighborhood, whatever they say. So one of the neighborhood he was here, I don't know where he went at. Um, they agreed with me to do that. So I got a lot of money invested in the property right now. The property is nice, there's no rats in here. It's been 
as, be, as being Mr. Moreiro every two months in there. It's no rat at all, no roaches, it's nothing there. The building is, so, is pretty, so paint outside and everything. And we open the restaurant in there and go put in your windows around, land my system, cameras, all that. And, and I keep the place clean, the front and everything. I got people living upstairs on the second floor. So the place is not abandoned. Okay. Um. You don't um, own the property, correct? No, I'm, I lease the property. Okay. Um, and when you came uh, to, I guess when you first signed the lease or maybe when you first visited the property, uh, was it occupied at that point? No, it was not occupied. Okay. Do you know um, how long it had been unoccupied? Probably like uh, probably eight or nine months when I got the property. That's what, that's what Orlando told me. Okay. Yeah, I'll go over the land will say, so I don't know. Okay, and when were you told this? I was told down November of last year. November of last year? Yeah, so. Okay. Um, and then you made your application. Yeah, for a liquor board license. When this year? <laughs> what was that? So when did you make your application for this year? For this, that was uh, a few months ago, I think, three months more, four months ago, I think. I don't, I don't recall it all. I was like four months ago. Maybe July. August, yeah, right. Yeah. 20 August. August 27th. August 27th. Okay, so you signed the lease towards the end of last year. Yeah, like at okay, the middle of the last year because I, I was fighting with the liquor board like for a year. I was fighting the liquor board for like for a year and they denied me. So I realized that I can invest a lot of money on the property already. I decided that I can make my money back. I said, open that business. I don't want to go to the store. I say I want to open the shop, like a you know, salt shop or carry out shop or something, you know? So that's what I want to do. Because I got a lot of money invested already, you know? Okay. And I go invest more money, like $20,000 right now, if they, if they, if they approve their, their, carry out, uh, their restaurant. Okay. So I want to have the community nice, and I talk to them, I told them I would get along with them, I would, I would volunteer whatever they want me to do. I don't got no issues with that. All right. Any questions? Oh, that was an that was an old letter. Um, that was um, originally scheduled for August twenty first, and we postponed it at that time. And that letter was prior to that hearing date. Okay. Um, and you want to operate it as a restaurant? Yes. It's going to be a Spanish, American, Italian restaurant. All three. Oh, did you speak with your opposition while he yeah, was here? Yes, I spoke to him, yeah. And he said the only one concerned, he was about the this, about this sudden, how long the building was open. He was considered they can reopen back as a commercial. That's what he was talking about. That's okay. what he wanted to know. And he went to speak to, to the gentleman right here, and then he left. Okay. Anything further? Just to clarify, sure. restaurant. Carry out or well, restaurant? I, I square up in the restaurant because, like he say, that, that he's going to approve the carry out. So I'm going to agree with the restaurant. Okay. That's what he, that's what he said. He say he would he would approve like a restaurant, but you know, saying but no carry out. So I go I go with the restaurant. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice pleasure today. And have have a nice holiday. Have a good holiday. Okay, next, 2014 358, 47, 11 and a half through 15 Hartford Road, Javon Spence. Spence, uh, we have this as an application to use a portion known as 3001 Rose Kemp Avenue as a garage other than accessory for the storage, repair, and servicing of motor vehicles, including state inspection, not over one and a half ton capacity, 
not including body work, painting, or engine rebuilding. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Will all those giving testimony raise their hands and be sworn, please? Do you swear, raise your right hands, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Um, did you guys, by the way, have an opportunity to step out and speak? Yes. Um, any progress with discussions? Okay. All right. Do we have staff reports? Uh, yes. First, we have a letter from a resident on Arabia Avenue. Uh, I would like to oppose the request to use the rear of 47 Fifth Harper Road, known as 3001 Road Tech Avenue, as an elevator shop. And that the Southeast Corner of Harper Road in Weaver, that is now a four rent sale on the repair plan, this sale shop is also opposed by the surrounding community. And now it sits as an ice cream as does another sale for the repair shop at the northwest corner of Moravia Road and Harper Road. Along with the residents of the surrounding community, I do not want to see Harper Road turn into the kind of eyesore and wasteland that the Judge Board has allowed to happen to the Upper Blair Road Park. An auto repair shop at 4713 Harper Road would be a step in this direction and result in another eyesore for Harvard Road at a time when Harvard Road is becoming mentioned in the city paper and the sun as a destita destination for dining, theater, music, and art. Uh, we also have a letter from Baltimore Development Corporation indicating that given the proposed automotive use does not conform with the Laurelville Business District's urban renewal plan, BDC is not in support of the project. We also have letters from the Walterson Improvement Association, Harbell, the Community of the uh, Umbrella Association, and Morgan Park, who also indicate that the Laurelville Urban Renewal Plan also mandates that all uses within the boundaries be reviewed by the community review panel. And we have, are concerned with this, over this fact that the panel has not had the opportunity to meet with the appellant. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Planning department notes that this property is in the Lauraville business area, which has an urban renewal plan, which has some specific limitations imposed on uses in this area. And for that reason, the Department of Planning recommends that approval of this appeal, if it is granted, be subject to these conditions. First, the repair and servicing of motor vehicles will be limited to body repair and engine rebuilding, if that in fact is the applicant's wish. And specifically, there will be no automobile painting, automobile accessory sales, repair, or installation, automobile glass and mirror sales and service, or similar commercial activity on the property. There will be no parking, staging, or storing of vehicles on public rights of way. There will be no parking or storage of unlicensed vehicles on the property. All work must be performed indoors. All materials, parts, and equipment related to this use will be stored indoors. The area used for temporary storing of vehicles and the rear of the property will be adequately screened by an opaque fence or wall meeting the requirements of the Lauraville Business Area Urban Renewal Plan, and that means specifically six feet high. And if a dumpster is used to collect waste and trash related to this use, the dumpster will be placed either inside the existing building or within a masonry enclosure having a solid lockable wooden gate. Thank you. Um, a couple of issues. <clears throat> First of all, um, Mr. Chair, could we throw some information about the address here? Yeah. Um, when I was reviewing this application yesterday, I got confused over the fact that it appears that the building in question that I'm trying to get a permit for is not on this lot. It, the application indicates uh, uh, 4711 through 15 Harford Road, which is lot three, which is the corner property, 70 feet wide, approximately. And we requested from the applicant a, a diagram of the use and all that he gave us was a sketch of the building itself, but not how it relates to the lot. And in looking at the 
aerial photography, the building that he's requesting appears to be uh, on lot two, which is the adjacent property, and that the portion of this lot that's known as uh, 3001 Rose Camp is just an open space. Um, this area here. So, um, and lot two is not owned by the same person that owns lot three, so he would need authorization from the property owner if he wanted to use his lot at that lot. So there's some confusion. Okay. And I believe that we should, at the very best, have a site plan with dimensions showing what lot it's on uh, before we could actually get into the details of a conditional use application. Uh, apparently the parking area which we don't have any site plan for, uh, would be on lot three. So anyway, that's um, unfortunately. Do you have that other aerial there? I'm sorry? The other aerial photograph? I have yeah, that one. a larger um, view of it. And a straight down angle. Okay, sir, which property, <coughs> this one right there, okay, okay, so that's a different property address. The, what the landlord gave me when I rented the place, I've been in there since like 2012, is uh, 4713 Hoffer Road Rear, that's what they gave me. Uh, well, he may be running you the neighbor's property. <laughs> well, I think the owner owns all those buildings on Hoffer Road. Not right, right in front. They're two different uh, uh, limited liability corporations. Not, they're not owned by the same party. Oh. And Associates and. That's my owner. 4709 is SFP LLC. Okay. Um. Jeez. <coughs> Yeah. All right. Um, geez. Do we have, well, I guess, yeah. All right, so the first problem is, um, if you're not the property owner um, and you're leasing it from someone and there's a question as to who owns the lot that you're on, um, we'd need to have some kind of authorization from the property owner authorizing you to go forward with the appeal. Um, I mean, it's possible that this is just a paperwork thing and that, that, that's just the part that needs to be sorted out. Um, but the situation that we don't want to be in is to hear this appeal and um, a judge certain rights as to that property, and then we have a property owner coming in and saying, hold on a second, this was my property, this guy's not my tenant, and what are you all doing? Um, <clears throat> so I don't see how we can, I'm going to guess the building owner's not here. No, she actually wanted to come, and I told her I don't think it was necessary to come. 
That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, I think but the, the daughters, it was Mr. Abbott had owned the buildings and the daughters took it over from him. So there might be those same people, might be the same people. Um, I don't know really what to say about that. I know. Because uh, Mr. Abbott, I know that he built that building for his uh, plumbing. He had a plumbing business. And he retired. Three. There's a lot three. And if, if you look at the official address, this is 4711 and a half. Mm -hmm. And this is 4711. 47. Oh nine to eleven. Yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. 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 So. All right. Um, I think that we're going to have to get the property owner here okay. um, to be able to sort this out. Um, I'm sorry that we've gotten to this point and you know, we've discovered this is an issue, mm -hmm. um, but really this is a threshold issue that we're going to have to get figured out. Okay. That's why a site plan would help, because with dimensions, so we can figure out. Yeah, because what we've got are, um, we've got printouts of property records which show an overlap of property addresses with two different entities. Um, we have 4709 and 4711. <coughs> Harford Road is being owned by SFB LLC. And then we have 4711 through 4715 Harford Road is being owned by DLA Associates LLC. Um, and so there's a confusion as to who owns which part of which property. Um, because we've got the um, uh, the appeal sheet, David, the appeal form. Because there's a, um, isn't there a property owner authorization yeah, part? Yeah, right. oh, okay. Is who the applicant put down as the owner. Um, and the, also the, uh, form that the zoning administrator's office provides and shows lot DOA also. Uh, best I can, uh, the best guesstimate that I can make based on the aerial photograph is that this structure has a property line running right through it. It appears that it, it straddles both lots at best. So it's just, um, there's just enough confusion there to make it difficult to make a, a proper assessment of it. <coughs> yeah, because where we've got the property line following is Back here at 3003, which is supposed to show up as a <coughs> triangular lot here at lot four, and this lot line behind it. Yeah, I can't figure out where this building is. I can't tell if it's on lot three, if it's on Lot four. This is the city zoning that. That's the building. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to have to have the property owner come. Um, we'll have to um, get the hearing rescheduled. Um, but if you can contact the property owner and have them come so that we can get this sorted out. Um, if in the meantime you can um, work out a better um, site plan. Okay. Um, that'll help us also figure things out. All right. Um, and for the opposition. Yes, 
Sorry. Okay. Um, the nature of your objection is? The nature of our objection is basically what Mr. Henry read in the record that um, we don't believe conforms with the urban renewal plan and we also believe that um, the urban renewal plan mandates any change in use come before the community with the UPNL prior to the use being granted. Okay. Um, and Mr. Henry is there, I mean, uh, Mr. French is there position the planning department takes as far as whether or not um, the use does or doesn't violate the urban renewal plan? The department is taking the position that part of the use applied for may be permissible under the urban renewal plan, but there are specific parts that could be included since there was not a complete description of the use in the application, which would be prohibited by the urban renewal plan. And the applicant has a copy of this memorandum and he can review the specific requirements of the urban renewal plan and indicate to the board what exact use he would make of this property if he was granted this appeal. Okay. Um, and then as far as the um, presentment to the community association? The plan requires that any permits applied for uh, must be reviewed by the Lauraville Community Review Panel or its successor. That is in the plan. Uh, Must the, be reviewed by or yes. approved by? Reviewed. Reviewed. And then the community review plan. panel makes a recommendation to the commissioner on So. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> seems as though we have a few steps that we'll need to take. But um, our next hearing is until January the 13th, um, although I'm advised that we have a full docket for that already. So we're probably realistically looking at the 27th, um, which fortunately gives you um, time to uh, work with the planning department on um, uh, assuring them that your use doesn't conflict with the urban renewal plan. Um, and then you can also, it looks like you're um, one way or another going to have to go through the, um, uh, through the uh, review process um, so that uh, the housing commissioner will be able to make a, um, uh, uh, a determination as far as your ultimate permit. Although, I'm not sure. Um, that would be something that he'd have to pursue. That would be as subsequent a part of the whole to any process. approval by this board. board. In other words, when correct. he was actually yeah. going so for use of occupancy permits. Yeah, so and that would be nature. something that would have to be resolved before this, but it would be have to be something that you would get resolved before you'd be able to get your permit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. When you're um, <coughs> here, you go. Um, after you contact the um, uh, planning department, um, Mr. French, did you have a card by the way? I'm sorry. Did you have a card you wanted? I to didn't bring one with me. I'm sorry. Okay, but, but I'm missing. Number, okay, That's the number should be on the um, uh, uh, on the um, planning uh, memo okay. that you've got. Um, but once you've um, worked through those, if you can contact the um, uh, can contact Mr. Tanner to let me know that you're ready to proceed. Okay. Okay. Thank all you. right. Thank you. Sure. Happy holidays, all. Next is 2014-166-4030 West Garrison Avenue, Shacomba Phipps. Okay. All right. Folks, you don't need to be strangers. There's a microphone right there. All right, um, Mr. Phipps, we have this as an application to use a portion of the premises as a restaurant and carry out, including live entertainment and dancing. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. If all those giving testimony will raise their hands and be sworn, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony and determine that the given this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right. 
Do we have staff reports? Uh, yes. First, we had a cover letter with a petition of the Fox and the Board of Signatures indicating that they signed the Linda area. It comes to the conclusion that the people who live in the immediate area of this request do not want such a business there. They are against it being against all the Fox proceedings, especially on Philip and Gamma Heights. Also, as you may know, there is an elementary school within two blocks, Langston Hughes Elementary, number five. I personally have spoken to Mr. Shakumba about this, and he has sent the letter to Langston Heights Community Action Association. And although he is a nice guy, the neighborhood feels that such an establishment will not benefit the neighborhood. In fact, it may hinder things that we're trying to improve on. If Mr. Shakumba can limit the activity of this location until 11 p.m. and not early hours in the morning, control the noise, trash, outside drinking and parking, I am sure the neighbors may be more receptive to such an idea. Uh, they also another group of respondents. Members of that. Ten of them primarily from Lyndon Heights Avenue. They compare the possible problems for this proposal with a similar business down the street that brings on rowdy noise outside the premises after closing, alcoholic beverages being allowed when open, disturbing the peace with loud music from vehicles, excessive speed when entering into and from the premises at the location, leaving empty liquor containers in front of the residences on the gutter side, patrons disrespecting the residents that live on the odd side of the street, damaging of vehicles of residences, uh, and the need to investigate a liquor license. And we have findings report. Thank you. Planning Department reviewed the application that was originally filed for the hearing. Now originally scheduled for June 3rd of 2014. In that application, the applicant indicated that there would be continuing use of the property as a garage and that this would be an additional use on the same property. The application indicated that there would be live entertainment for two hours only from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Wednesday and Thursday evenings, but on Fridays and Saturdays, the live entertainment and dancing would occur from 7.30 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. There was not a statement of the rated capacity of the premises, and the floor plan did not have many dimensions that would assist in determining what a possible capacity rating would be. Um, there was also not a security plan for the two nights, <coughs> Friday and Saturday, when the live entertainment and dancing would occur for up to six <coughs> hours. The department recommends that approval of this appeal, if granted, be subject to these conditions, in addition to any conditions the board may establish. First, a copy of the use and occupancy permit for the premises must be kept on the premises and available for inspection by representatives of Baltimore City at all times. Second, a copy of the written approval of the board of any live entertainment provided on the premises, including details of any restrictions or limitations on that live entertainment, must be kept on the premises and available for inspection by representatives of Baltimore City at all times. And third, a copy of all other permits and licenses required pursuant to the written approval of the board must be kept on the premises and available for inspection by representatives of Baltimore City at all times. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> all right, um, Mr. Phipps, are those uh, conditions that you've Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, why don't you tell us what the closing here? <clears throat> okay, well, I've been in the community like about 25, about 25 years. I've been around that area. You know, I talk with the neighbors and all that stuff. You know, if they have any problem, they come to me and I try to solve the problem and try to look out for them, you know, to my best of my, of my ability. And, um, and what I did, I just moved from one building to the other building. So I've been, I've been doing this since. Uh, 2000. So I just moved it from in front of the, the neighborhood. I was moved on the other side, so I don't have too much disturbance in in the block. Okay. Um, now, uh, off the record, we had a, a discussion um, when we were asking about um, uh, whether or not there was a desire to have a dialogue. 
Uh, and we also did discuss the point, uh, is the fact that we're here uh, in a little bit of an unusual posture because uh, you've already been um, before the board before, but there was an issue regarding posting. Um, I recall um, that you were here, obviously. And was there anyone else who was here at the prior hearing? Okay, you were. And um, any of you ladies present at the prior hearing? If, just a minute, ma'am, if you can come forward and then if you can just simply give your name first. My name is Renee Mayfield. Uh, we were here, uh, the other two ladies, my and some others were here from the community on October 7, uh, after we observed a posted fine, uh, sign that said October, there will be a hearing on October 7 at 5 p.m. We responded here a little before 5 p.m. and were told that the meeting could actually, the hearing could actually happen at 1 o'clock. When we returned to the business site, we took photographs of the sign to make sure that we weren't mistaken and the sign was still there and it said 5 o'clock. So immediately we all, all got together and uh, collaboratively we uh, sent an email to Sharon Green Middleton's office and also to the uh, zoning board, Mr. Dan Tanner. Um, and with photographs of the business and, and our, our also a letter of our concern. All right. Okay. Um, I think the easiest way um, to proceed, since we've heard this before, would be to give those who haven't um, been, uh, who weren't uh, given an opportunity to speak at the last time we heard this appeal, um, the opportunity to voice their concerns now. So. Um, was there one of you who wanted to go for first, or you can uh, designate a representative if you'd like to? Please, I'll but I want to say, can, I have something to say. Sure. Uh, my name is Dorothea Massey, and I live on the Linden Heights side. Um, the residents on that side of the street of the 5100 block, we are 62 and 95 years, up to 95 years of old. And um, when people leave his premises even to get all the work done or just visit his premises they use excessive speed we do have small kids in the block and it's a very small block and I feel as though I mean I had requested for speed bumps because of that and then when you leave his premises uh, when you come out it's a two-way street right at his premises and then further down is just a one-way street so when you enter into Linden Heights Avenue you have to be real cautious because people be coming out of his uh, business coming into Linden Heights going towards Garrison and Garrison is a one-way street going out not in okay. and it's a problem okay and the noise is a problem okay okay thank you mm -hmm. Uh, regarding the, the, the issue at hand, um, I became aware of the hearing date with a schedule for October 7th uh, by uh, Dorothea Massey, who lives on Linden Heights. I have a, a, a supportive home for people with disabilities on Garrison Avenue, and I'm there sometimes seven days a week, uh, many hours of the day. And uh, one of the things that prompted me to come to this hearing is when I was uh, you know, advised that there was a request for additional use of the property. I am familiar with the neighborhood. I grew up in the neighborhood. And um, I know that when Mr. Shacomba started his auto repair business there, I was already there. I was always concerned about the eyesore proposition of the, the uh, auto repair shop and the parties that occurred at the business since I can remember. Um, I searched after finding out about this October 7th hearing, I searched to see what the permit status was in general and I have not to this day been able to find any permits to even operate the auto repair shop. Uh, additionally, there are cars that have been there apparently abandoned for a great deal of time, even, I'd even venture to say for years. There are people sleeping in the cars at certain times of year. There's always activity at the shop, there's always loud music. I'm in the 3800 block of West Garrison Avenue, and one, on one particular occasion, I went to the police department because my residents were so upset about the loud music that had gone on from 
When I arrived there at 11 a.m., it was going on. And when I left there at 8 p.m., it was still going on. It turns out there was some kind of festival or something that they were having from the premises. So, again, my major concern is the lack of consideration to the community and uh, the failure for, apparently, for Mr. Shacomba to, to access proper permits in the first place. And then for what I find very disturbing that we were mis the community was misled about the date of the hearing. You could see that the time on that notice had been altered. In addition, there was a, a vehicle of some sort parked almost up against the wall where you basically had to go around. I took some of those photos, by the way. You had to go, I had to go around this vehicle to get a good picture of the permit. And um, that vehicle continued to stay there even after the hearing date. So I'm concerned about Mr. Shacomba's ability to be, to act in an appropriate and legal manner. Uh, I'm also aware that alcohol is used at these parties that have gone on for years. And I'm concerned that if he now does obtain a permit to hold these uh, parties, dance hall, entertainment, that the situation will become even more out of hand than it has been over time. Thank you. Ma'am? Yes, my name is Angela Jones, and I'm here rep representing my uncle, Mr. Chester Booker. He's been a resident in that area for 40 years, and it's been a nice, quiet neighborhood. And we like to keep it that way. There, there are times when you go through the neighborhood late at night, there's no parking, you can't hear the loud music, and it's very annoying to my uncle. He's 80 years old and he's blind, and he just doesn't need to be in that type of atmosphere. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Fripps. Um, what um, you were describing earlier that um, the um, that the uh, you're, what you're really looking to do is to move the location of the entertainment from one part of the premises to another part. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you've already been. Um, conducting um, the live entertainment that you're looking to have. Yeah, it was in the other building. It was where? I was in, in the other building before I moved to the other building. Uh, which other building is yeah, that? The 100 in the night. Okay. <coughs> I'm trying to see where that. Is. Oh, it looks like it's right there. At the end. All right. So you're moving it from one building to the other building. Instead of in the middle of the block, I'm trying to go to the end of the block. Okay. Um, right. So you'd be going further away from. Right. All right. From in front of the neighborhood. Yes. And um, there was a concern about the hours right. that you'd be operating. I saw that you had a letter here of your proposed hours. Um, Fridays and Saturdays, you are going to be from 9.30 to 1.30? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. And then Wednesdays and Thursdays, 7.30 to 9.30? Oh. Okay. Um, and then can you describe the space where this live entertainment would be? Is it just a auto repair garage on the inside? Is it? It's a separate building from auto repair shop. Okay. It used to be a washing machine building there. Okay. Is there any, um, are there anything on the walls? Is there any? Thing on the floor to um, uh, absorb any sound. Yeah, well, we have the um, well, the walls is um, you know, insulated you know, with sheet rock and uh, soundproof, mm -hmm. yeah, and everything is, is closed in. Okay, um, and the building where you currently have this, does it have that same kind of um, fit out as far as the soundproofing or anything like that? Yeah, but I'm, I'm not in a building no more because I'm you know, the, 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 the for me that I put other building. Okay. 
Um, and there was someone who was, oh, this was issued back in 2000. Mm -hmm. I think that we can. Okay. Folks want to see? Sure. Okay. Um, any questions? Mr. Washington, I would like to say something. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. My name is George Mitchell. I'm president of the Lancaster Hughes Community Action Association. I'm also president of Neighborhoods United, which is a, 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 a collaboration of all the presidents and most of the uh, neighborhood associations in Upper Park Heights. As you know, the letter that I sent in early was in reference to, we did go around and take a survey of all the people in the neighborhood. The first survey that we took, which was the first hearing, there were 93 people that signed the petition not to have this such an establishment in the neighborhood. Six people said they did, did not care. Not one person said they would like to. On the second petition that we took after the hearing came back, but again, as I think he said, 40 or 50 people signed not to have it. An additional four people said they didn't care. No one said that they wanted to have it. We're in the uh, Park Heights uh, Master Plan area, and we're also in the major uh, motivation for the, for the impact area of Park Heights. There's a lot of uh, uh, situations going on that's going to improve the neighborhood. We, uh, along with Council of Middleton, we have 15 liquor licenses within a five block area of, of where Mr. Kuma wants to be. Uh, we are in the process of trying to rid ourselves of so many liquor license establishments. I think it will be detrimental to the neighborhood, uh, be detrimental to the kids in the neighborhood, detrimental to the school. And previously, un unbeknown to me, people have told me their place is operated as a strip club late at night to 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if that's true or not true, but this is what was related to me. I personally know Mr. Jacoma. He has fixed my car before. I have a problem with him personally. But as a president of the Neighborhood Association, I think that would be detrimental to our, to, to our neighborhood. Okay. Um, <clears throat> some background would probably be a little bit useful. Um, I understand that there's a, um, and I think we might have gone into this um, the last time that we were here. Um, but <clears throat> Although um, there are adjoining residential uses, if you look at the zoning map, um, which has the streets laid out and the buildings, and it also shows the boundary lines of the um, zoning districts, um, <coughs> on the, <coughs> I guess it's the north side of West Garrison Avenue, um, that is a R6 zone, so it's zoned residential. Um, adjacent to it in a B3, well, it is a B3-2 zone. Um, and there's some differences um, between the two of them, um, most particularly that the B3 zone allows a lot more uses, including this one as a conditional use, than would be permitted in the R6 zone. Um, so what you've got is um, kind of a conflict of um, adjoining uses. Um, so you have in one zone um, a residential district, um, but you have in an adjoining zone a commercial district. Um, and people who are operating within the commercial district have the right to operate as commercial establishments. Um, and people in the residential district can um, feel like they are in a residential area because their zone is residential. But the fact is when you cross the street, you're no longer in that residential district. So there is, I think that there is some conflict here that's just generated by that simple fact of the zoning map. Um, but I think that we've got a picture of kind of what people are looking for here. Uh, any other questions? Well, I, yes. Last time you were here, you, your testimony was that uh, 
There's no alcohol served. Right, no, I'm not holding the fences. And I think there's also your testimony that there will be steel bands playing. Yeah, steel bands and from Cleveland. Okay. Is that still your plans for that? Uh, Is I'm that still what you plan? Yeah, for yeah. And um, I think there was also your testimony that no one is allowed to bring alcohol, no BYOB. Right, no BYOB. Yeah. And that's still your plan? No, that's still my plan. Okay. Just one last clarifying question. Mm -hmm. Is this your current auto repair? Yeah, it's not right. Okay, and this longer building is your no, current? No, that's what I was going to move from up there. All right, so you're going to move yeah. the, the, the mu music. That's where you're currently music. having the music right. and stuff now. And you want to move it to right. use it as part of this? Right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Can I say something? Sure. Like I said, you know, I, I got the, the, you know, the, the um, you know, I'm doing that, but I'm doing that, but I'm trying to, you know, be more cautious on what you got. And, you know, any problem that's come to me, you know, I try to solve the problems. And I'm going to try to keep it up, you know. One problem I have. Yeah. and we got to walk right around. We got people with handicaps, uh, old people, 92 years old, who came and stay. Okay. But like I said, I try and just to keep your business part open. But like I said, I'm going to do a little changes as far as the, you know, my, the, my, my customers coming in now. I'm going to put my foot down and then I'll make sure, you know, everything is it's good. I have uh, one more thing that I'd like to say yeah. in terms of that other building that you're planning to go to. Right. Uh, it's my understanding that you've been leasing that building to someone else who had a party back here in, uh, uh, recently. Yeah, that wasn't my business. October. Yeah. And um, you leased that building to him, but now you're going to move into that same building? No, that wasn't my building. That was the, um, the, the <coughs> another building, but that was, that was, I was trying to get that building so I could move my spot to that spot. Well, that party, I, I'm, my understanding was raided. Was, that was somebody else. That was somebody else. That's party. the building that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's also witnesses mm. to the alcohol being transported by van mm. to this well, party at night. A couple of things where um, the gentleman is going to direct to his questions to the board. Okay. Um, uh, you know, if there are, um, well, <clears throat> I think that um, the applicant has stated what his um, intentions are with the property. Um, that um, that there isn't going to be um, uh, any alcohol either sold from the premises or um, permitted on the premises. Um, there will be no BYOB. Um, and there's um, further been um, an agreement as far, or at least a representation from the applicant as far as the restriction on the use um, and the kind of entertainment that, um, that he's seeking. Um, and I think that that was consistent from the last um, hearing, and he confirmed it here today. Um, and so questions about what may or may not have occurred with other operators in other locations, um, or even in this location, but by another operator, really don't get to what we're talking about right here. But I think that we're understood as far as how things are going to be going forward. All right. Um, we need to get on with other stuff. <laughs> but thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. Nice Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Sir. Next, 2014-513, 401 Millington Avenue, Chenkai Yan. Good evening, Mr. Young. We have this as an application to use the first floor as a carry-out food shop. Is that correct? Yes. All right. We have staff. Well, first of all, if you can raise your hand, be sworn, please. I do swear or affirm the testimony that you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. Do we have staff reports? Conforming use in a residential district, and the 
department notes that there is a record that there was a previous use of this property as a carryout food shop. However, there is also a note in the zoning administration notes suggesting that that shop may have closed in 2005. The department also notes that this particular property happens to be across the street from North Frederick Elementary School, which has been selected as a phase one school for the Baltimore City INSPIRE program, which is developing strategies to improve schools and neighborhoods simultaneously. The department therefore recommends disapproval of this appeal unless non-conforming use of the property has not been discontinued or abandoned. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Yan, um, if you can tell us about what your intentions are with the property and if you can also um, discuss the issue that's raised by planning as far as abandonment or discontinuance of the prior use. No, he's saying that he recommends that the board disapprove what you're asking for right. unless you can prove that there hasn't been a discontinuance of the use um, or the, yes, of the non-conforming use, um, uh, that is the use of the property for commercial purposes. Um, uh, uh, so you need to provide some evidence as to what the prior use of the property was. So, okay, okay. So, um, you're leasing the property. You no. purchasing? Okay, you purchased. I'm purchasing. Okay, and is there somebody in there currently? Is there a, some no, kind it's, of establishment? It's, 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 it's falling apart. Okay. All right. So the building is vacant. Yes. Okay. Do you know um, approximately how long maybe it's been vacant? Um, since when they closed. Okay. Do you know when that was? Oh five. Oh, fine. Okay. So then there hasn't been any use made of the property since approximately 2005? Yes. Okay. Um, and you said that the property's uh, in dilapidated condition, it's falling down? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and you want to operate a carryout? Yes. All right. Um, you have to obviously rehabilitate the building, yeah, rebuild it. Okay, um, I think that that gets at what the issue was that the planning department was raising, which is that <coughs> the zoning district where this property is located, it's an R8 zoning district. Um, um, the R stands for residential. So it's a residential district zone. Now, um, you're talking about a commercial use, which um, uh, R, some commercial uses are permitted, um, particularly where those commercial uses have been there for a long time. But although commercial uses are allowed to continue, where they are stopped, where they're discontinued for some amount of time, there's a possibility that the ability to operate um, a commercial establishment from that, pro from that property may have been lost if it's been discontinued long enough. Um, and that period is a year. Um, the board has some discretion to extend that period of discontinuance, but the code says that the board can't extend that period any longer than two years. Um, you represented that no use has been made of the property for about almost 10 years. Um, so that's like five times the amount, maximum amount that the board could extend um, any possible commercial use. Um, so at this point, I'm not sure that the board has the authority anymore to give you the approval to operate a commercial establishment from this premise. Unless you've got something no. where I've got it wrong. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Any questions? No. All right. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Next, yes, 2014-515, 3625 Fairview Avenue, Horizon Property Group, LLC, care of Kashif Khan. 
<laughs> Good evening, Mr. Green. Good evening, Mr. Chair. It seems like a long time since we've seen you. Oh, yes. A few hours. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Mr. Green, we have this as an application to house three dwelling units as a multiple family detached dwelling. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. All right. If you can, uh, I guess if those giving testimony can raise their hands and be sworn, please. Okay, do we have staff reports? Um, yeah. Yes, the planning department notes this property is contained in an R2 zoning district. And in that district, multiple family dwellings are a conditional use which could be allowed. However, the record available to the department on this property indicates its most recent use has been as a single family detached dwelling. And in the R2 zoning district, the board is not authorized by the zoning code to approve a conversion of a single family use to a multiple family use. Therefore, the department recommends disapproval of the appeal because the zoning code does not provide the board discretionary authority to approve the requested conversion of a single family dwelling to a multiple family detached dwelling in an R2 zoning district. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, the conditional use, as, as Mr. French said, is, is a permitted as a conditional in that the district. Our concern is that the property, even though the records show it as having been converted from uh, multifamily to a single family, it's never in fact been physically converted to a single family. Um, actually, uh, Mr. Kahn here brought up So it's obvious that that property is an enormous piece of property. It's, it's much too large to ever be used for a single family home. It's in a neighborhood where most of the houses in that block are multifamily. They were grandfathered in. This one, as you can see from the zoning records, was three dwelling units ever since 1957. Um, now, Mr. Kahn, see <coughs> that it was legally converted to single family. I have photographs that show the meters were never removed and uh, meters are still there. Mr. Combs informed me that it's still physically broken into three separate apartments. The property's been vacant. You see it was, on, if you see on that uh, zoning history, the property was twice they attempted to make it into single family. First time it was voided. The second time it was approved, but if you notice with three meters there, that's telling me that the inspector never actually inspected the property. Somebody filed to reduce it and they reduced it without doing the inspection and requiring them to physically change the property. The property, as a result, was abandoned. The property's been sitting there vacant for an extremely long time. It's been used for uh, three units, period. <laughs> even though the records reflect that. Now, another of my concerns is that um, Mr. Kahn obtained this property from the city through one of its uh, receivership programs. Receivership program. Program. Yeah, he's, he's, here's some background information on Mr. Kahn. He's, he's been buying these properties from the city on the vacancy and value program. He's been renovating them, you can see from that article that he just completed four properties in Rosemount area, which is very depressed. He has a lovely brochure here showing examples of his work, this type of thing, uh, the quality of his work. Uh, when he brought this property from the city, it was still, like I said, physically as three apartments. Most of the properties in the block are apartments. They're enormous houses. And Mr. Kong, not having any his, uh, background in zoning, he brought it under the assumption he was buying a property that could resume its three apartment use. Um, he didn't find out, I didn't come into the picture until recently once he found out that he may have some issues. And uh, we've been trying, <coughs> trying to get, uh, get some use out of the property. Um, we're hoping that there's some type of, I'm, a, I'm understanding of uh, the legalities concerned because on paper it was reduced. Physically, it was never really reduced. Um, at a very 
Thus, we were hoping that there is some type of article in the zoning code that would address uh, financial hardships, putting uh, property in a position where it's unusable, this type of situation. Uh, Mr. Tanner would probably be the best one to know if there was some article in there that did address that type of hardship. But um, my contention is that even though legally <coughs> it's showing having been used as a single family, it's never in fact been used as a single family. He brought it from the city, assuming that it was going to be allowed to be used, and now he's stuck with the property. The, um, unfortunately, um, we missed uh, correspondence. We have a letter. Um, that the board received from a neighbor uh, in opposition to uh, multiple family dwellings in their community. They claim that there's already um, five houses in the 3600 block of Fairview that have been converted to apartments, and they do not support any more. So I wanted to make sure the board saw, uh, heard that. Uh, I don't have any magic. You don't have any help from me, <laughs> I do. <laughs> but, but, can I add something? Um, yeah. I just want to say the fact that, um, you know, we started back in um, um, November of 2012. We literally looked at 500 homes through the vacancy value properties, went in physically, had a plan, and we've been executing the plan. This particular property um, is, is 3,500 square feet, now counting basement. It has 10 huge rooms. And if you go into the, if you go into the, the house, it still has separate kitchens, separate bathrooms, separate doors on each and every level of the staircases are 56 inches wide. Um, so in all respect, uh, when we looked at it, we was under the assumption that it was a, a three unit thing. And I can tell you just by doing the financial, we've already invested money into the house, we've already changed the roof, we've already cleaned up the property, abated the citations that were outstanding uh, once we uh, took over the property. And it's just, it's, it's just not feasible for the property to be shown as a single family. I mean, you know, maintenance costs and stuff, it's not gonna allow for a family to have 10 rooms in a house and pay the maintenance and pay the, uh, uh, other stuff so it becomes very difficult and it's just not gonna be, I'm just afraid that when okay when it was in fact on the zoning card changed to a single family it was never executed I mean I can I think that's one of the reasons why the property was um, <coughs> left vacant because the cost of trying to you know do all the new electric new plumbing new HVAC uh, all the uh, plaster and by the way all the houses that we rehab are not only fully rehab, we also make them lead free. All of the houses are lead free now, uh, both in Loretta and Fayette. And we have two other properties that we're also working on through the vacancy valley. I just, I just don't want to, number one, we've already invested a lot of into it and then don't want to go back to the vacant status because in a feasible city, it's just not going to be financially uh, um, um, viable for it to be a single family unit with 10 rooms. So on one hand, I know the city is trying to uh, remove the sore eyes and uh, trying to rehabilitate the, the the properties and we're you know I know that I've talked to other investors um, that might want to take the property as a single family house and nobody is interested in doing that unless because it's just too huge I mean it's like you know 20 by 20 bedrooms it was a mansion so I think that if, if, if we're not granted that use um, that property might uh, you know we'll have a, a a significant financial distress um, in trying to do that, and I hate to just keep it like that. Um, so, and like I said, it was never physically changed. I mean, we can go into the house, uh, look at the separate plumbing and stuff, the doors and stuff. It's all still as a three unit. How many properties did you purchase to have an option property? Um, we have three. Three. We are approved for seven. And we have a line of credit with Baltimore Community Lending, which allows us to do three, four at a time, get them vacant, get them occupied, and then go ahead and do the same this thing. Is the first time you Through the OHAT. Right, so this is the first time you purchased the property thinking it was a multi-family dwelling, in fact, and then reverted to the same 
Yes, sir. The four properties we got on Loretta are single family homes. We got two more that we settled on last week. So we took that pro block over when it was 85% uh, uh, occupancy. Now, after completing this two, it'll only have one house left on that whole block. Um, and we're waiting on HUD for that. As a developer, it sounds as if you have a longer term plan for purchasing additional property. Yes, sir. Probably sounds a little bit uh, uh, after the fact, but uh, I'm cautioning you to make sure uh, before you purchase the property that it hasn't been converted to single family. Yeah, I know that now after the fact, after we spent, you know, yeah. uh, at this point, 35, that's 40, what he's so, have me doing now but, whenever he gets the property. But I hate to go back to a vacant house. That, that, that's why I'm saying if, if something can be granted on the fact that it was never physically changed, you know, we could definitely, yeah. Yeah. and there are other houses there that are that way. Yeah. And the letter of opposition even states that they, most of the houses on that block are more family. And actually, Fairview has a set of garden apartments uh, about two blocks down from there, too. Uh, so the area is saturated with multifamily. It's been that way for years because it's not practical to have single family there. But um, that brings us to his next property, too, which is the next one on the pocket. And I'd like to, because we've got the same problem with that property. Okay, oh, let's finish up with this one okay. first. Yeah. Okay. Um, were there any questions? Okay, in closing, mm -hmm. on this particular one, mm -hmm. it's our hope that you will, uh, the board and its wisdom will say, okay, the use was never actually completed, you know, as a single family, and it's never actually been used as a single family. So technically, uh, realistically, the use of three has never been discontinued, and that would allow the board to. Well, to as you know, that I mean, it's, um, it um, certainly uh, it's not a frequent occurrence, but it's not a uncommon occurrence where you'll have something like this, which will come up where you have, for whatever reason, you have a prior owner who. Um, they um, voluntarily give up the the, um, the, um, uh, the non-conforming units, um, whether they don't want to operate it anymore as a multifamily dwelling or what have you, and then they just close it up. Um, yeah, that, and, that cuts out the fees. And for, so for you know, and that's just how it sits. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know, but. The reality is that you have whoever it was back in the um, uh, the chain of ownership who gave up that. Um, yeah, and I can understand use. they gave it up because they didn't want to have to pay yearly multifamily fees, be subjected to violation notices every year for, you know. Uh, and I, I understand that as a tactic, landlords use to save money on properties that they've lost interest in and they've just let go by the wayside. I also like to mention. They shouldn't issue a permit to reduce it to a single family without doing unless all the meters have been removed correct. and the kitchen's removed. That's correct. And the property meets the definition of a single family. And it's obvious that wasn't done. In, in 1999, the same thing. They attempted to reduce it to single family, and that was voided out because I'm sure the inspector yes, went in and said it hadn't been reduced. I don't know what happened in 2001, but obviously they didn't remove the meters. Or That's the correct, yeah. So it's kind of a, a yeah. I just, you know. It's an unusual situation. That should situation. not have been issued unless they actually right. reduced it to a single family. Yeah, that single family. And, it, and it, you referred to it as non-conforming, as conditional use. Which is for me. No, I'm going to form it after a year. I wouldn't get it back. Yes. Okay. Um, if no more questions, I'd like to move to the next one because sure. I have, have some folks here. Mr. Brown. Sure. Let's call oh. the next case of 2014 uh, 517 2500 uh, West Cold Spring Lane. Yes, Mr. Brown's here. <laughs> okay, this property is similar circumstances. However, the situation isn't as dire as it is on Fairview. We have 
Mr. Brown here. He's from. No, I'm Jones. Oh, Mr. Jones. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm Mr. Jones. Uh, I'm green. I wanted some more color up here. <laughs> but okay, Mr. Mr. Jones. He, uh, Miss Jews and Mr. Mitchell were here earlier. They had to leave. Mr. Jones is here. What we had done, it, we had we'll need to get um, him sworn in. Okay. Yeah, right. I can talk for myself, sir. Okay. I'm seventy. Just wait for your turn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Okay. Okay. All right. um, and Mr. Green, <coughs> have, this is an application to house two dwelling units as multiple family attached dwelling in the premises. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And do we have staff reports? Uh, first, you have to have a letter from the Parkway Neighborhood application and find it's got certain elements in common with as Mr. Green is alluding to the case just heard. This property is located in an R6 residential district, <coughs> excuse me, in which again uh, the multiple family dwelling could be a permitted use. However, conversion is not authorized by the zoning code to be approved by the zoning board. <coughs> Pardon me. The department also notes that this property is considerably smaller in size. Mm -hmm. The department recommends disapproval of this appeal because the zoning code does not provide the board discretionary authority to approve the requested conversion of a single family dwelling to a multiple family attached dwelling in an R6 zoning district. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, originally, when we spoke with Ms. Jews, earlier she wasn't opposed to the use which she had she had misinterpreted the floor plans and she thought we were having three units when it was actually just two units we were asking for so she went along with that she said okay she could deal with that but uh, she had some other concerns and once I explained to her the circumstances we were dealing with here and I talked to Mr. Khan Mr. Khan has very slowly decided that this property isn't as dire a situation as the Fairview. The house is smaller, it's conducive to a single family home. He's willing to withdraw his request for the multifamily and he'll sell, uh, repair it as a, as a single family and sell it on the market for a fair price. You know, um, uh, actually they had agreed to support it, the two units, if we were willing to put a contingency in any approval that they would come back to the community for a redesign on the interior because they didn't think the interior was. And we went along with it, but I went along with it because I know this one ain't gonna pass. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's uh, aside from planning's uh, recommendations, which uh, we all know are valid from the previous case. This one isn't what we consider a dire situation where he stands to lose a lot of money. You wouldn't be able to sell it as a single. This house is marketable as a single family home. Okay. And he's being reasonable. He's going to go that route. Okay. So then so that this one you will, uh, you're basically yeah, just withdrawing. We're going to withdraw and okay. the single family. Okay. And that'll save from speaking to you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, if Mr. Kong, is that the way you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything you okay. want to say before uh, we just, want, just, just last comment on this cold spring. Also, this was also one of the houses we got through the OHAT on the same auction. So, again, we went in that 
property also had two separate sinks already made up, had a separate 200 meter uh, amp uh, a meter that was pulled, I mean, uh, uh, a panel pulled by the previous investor. So, so like I said, I mean, if, if you know, what, you know, so it still, I mean, it, was, it still had one meter though. So this one I'm willing to do it because it's not that a financial district, but the other one, Fairview, that, that could really uh, put us down, so. So we appreciate any consideration of what gives us, and thank you for okay. your time. Okay. I just thank make, you. Uh, make one couple comments. See, I had been a resident on the West Coast Spring Lane for 38 years. And that house, like I could say, I mean, it always has been a single family uh, dwelling. And also, we were trying to make a unit. Uh, in front of that house, there's a, a 33 bus sign. You can't park out front. And so then another issue was, where was the people going to park at? And, uh, well, but you understand that they're going to yeah, have to be yeah, a single family house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank so you. So we're all good. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up. Um, next up is 2014-520-2901 uh, O'Donnell Street, Stanley Five. <coughs> good afternoon again. Good afternoon. Well, or good evening almost. Oh, well, it's still afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Let's All give right. it the benefit of the doubt. Um, we have this as an application to increase outdoor table service from 28 seats to 36 seats, eight seats along O'Donnell Street and 28 Street, 28 seats along South Linwood Avenue as accessory to the restaurant use. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Uh, for the record, Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg, Martin Greenberg. I'm joined by my colleague Justin Williams and Jackie McCusker, the owner of Mamas on the Half Shell. Okay. Afternoon to you. Okay. Uh, well, those giving testimony, raise their hands and be sworn, please. That's you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony? All right. And do we have staff reports? Planning Department received this application and noted that the proposal was to provide, among other things, uh, seating on the O'Donnell Street side of the property, which appeared to take a 17-foot wide space across the front of an 18-and-a-half-foot wide property, which would block the front door and therefore considers that amount of seating proposed uh, to be inappropriate as it would impede pedestrian access to and from the building and emergency egress. This property has also been the subject of a separate appeal previously for a balcony with outdoor seating on the Linwood Street side of the property, which the board has approved. And the key thing is that the particular site plan that was included for the sidewalk seating on that side of the building did not show where the support posts for the balcony were going to be coming down and which could reduce the amount of seating area that would be available for placement of tables and seats. On that basis, the department is basically uh, supporting this proposal but with a reduced amount of seating which would be based in turn upon a finalized, dimensioned sidewalk site plan, which would basically address these concerns. The department therefore recommends approval of this appeal subject to these conditions. The applicant must provide a revised dimensioned sidewalk site plan showing a reduced number of tables and seats on the O'Donnell Street or front side of the building to allow unimpeded pedestrian access to and emergency egress from the premises using the front door and a reduced number of tables and seats on the Linwood Street side of the building if needed to accommodate placement of support posts for the balcony previously approved by the board for additional accessory outdoor table service. A minimum of six feet of the sidewalks must remain clear and unobstructed for pedestrian use. The capacity of the outdoor seating area will be not more than the number of tables and seats for patrons approved by the planning department based upon the revised dimension sidewalk site plan. The tables will be limited to those that can seat four patrons and are to be kept against the wall of the building. 
There will be no outdoor bar, no outdoor music, jukebox, or other form of entertainment, and all patrons must be seated for dining and served by wait staff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Hecker, as I flip through um, your packet, I see the letter from the Canton Community Association um, where they say that they oppose part of the appeal um, that's for outdoor table service on the O'Donnell Street side, but they don't uh, oppose the um, portion dealing with uh, the Linwood Avenue side. Um, and I think that the planning department had had some concern as well about the number of seats um, on the O'Donnell Street side. Um, so does your client have a position there? Yeah, if I, if I can explain just sort of briefly what we're, our application is for today. There is existing outdoor seating on the Linwood Avenue side of, 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 of uh, Mama's on the Half Shell. Yes. It, was, it was approved back in 2004, and they approved at that time 16 outdoor seats. That appears to have morphed over time. I think we have actually about 20 out there right now. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been a problem for anyone. Um, and then a couple of years ago, we filed an application to add a second floor balcony on that side, which was approved, and that authority has been extended through the end of next year. Um, and that plan is still in the works, and as Mr. French mentioned, um, when, we, when we ultimately implement that plan, we're probably going to have to adjust the number of seats we can have on Linwood Avenue so that the support posts for the balcony don't interfere with the tables and chairs out mm -hmm. there. On O'Donnell Street, we haven't historically had outdoor seating, and so we're applying to add outdoor seating on that side. Uh, I should mention we're also planning to add two additional tables on Linwood Avenue. So that's, those are those two tables. It's two tables with four seats apiece on Linwood Avenue. Our application had two tables with four seats apiece also on O'Donnell Street. And we met with the Canton Community Association. They expressed some concern about the number of, of seats existing all, all, along that whole O'Donnell Street corridor. Mr. French expressed the same to me in a conversation a few days ago. And we are prepared to um, accept a compromise on O'Donnell Street. We would suggest that we have two tables with two seats apiece. It's half as much space on O'Donnell Street. We think that that, that will keep a clear passageway at the front door. They'll be set far enough back from the uh, street line there that there'll be plenty of room for pedestrian access. Um, and we think that that is really a very reasonable compromise with what the Canton um, Community Association is suggesting. Uh, the only other restaurants actually that have outdoor seating on this block of O'Donnell Street are Tavern on the Square next door, which I think has four tables, and, Mama, or, and Nacho Mama's, which is also owned by Mrs. McCusker, and that has two tables in front. So it's really not a whole lot of seats, but we, we understand the community association's concern about a whole string of tables along, along that way and with the doorway there and everything. We think it's reasonable. To, to reduce that number, and I, I believe that's consistent with what Mr. French is recommending as well. Okay. Um, just looking at the dimensions on the um, drawings that we have, uh, the four top tables along um, O'Donnell Street would leave clearance of five feet. Um, uh, they would take up, according to the drawings, four feet, six inches. Um, so if we trim that down to the two top, um, I'll imagine that's going to add. That should add a little, a little yeah, bit of space like, there. Like 16 inches, maybe. Probably about right. Um, so you're then you'd have you'd be up over the um, six feet of clearance that's typical for. Mm -hmm. And as Mr. French and I have discussed previously, we'll have to prepare a revised site plan anyway as part of our minor privilege application mm -hmm. for the outdoor seating. So that's certainly an agreeable condition. Okay. Right. Any questions? If I can just raise one other thing that was in the Canton Community Association's letter, they always attach their outdoor seating guidelines, mm -hmm. which include a 10 p.m. limit on outdoor seating. That limit, they, it's sort of a blanket thing that they have for all outdoor seating in Canton, but that 10 p.m. limitation has not been applied to any of the restaurants on the square in Canton. And that's why if you look through the packet that I handed out, there are copies of all of the decisions for all the other restaurants on the square that have outdoor seating, and none of them has the 10 p.m. limitation in it. And I just wanted to make clear that um, we, are not agreeable to that condition, um, and we would like the the hours to be the hours of the restaurant. Okay, I know you've got uh, the hours of the operation of the restaurant are until 2 a.m. daily. That's correct. Although I think Ms. McCusker testified that there are probably not people sitting outside until 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay. As a matter so of practice, but 
but none of the other restaurants are subject to a limitation on the hours, and we don't think it would be fair to impose one here. Okay. Okay. Were there limitations imposed on the uh, table service for the existing table service? No. And there's a copy of that decision in the, the file I handed out. And in fact, when we were just here relatively recently for Nacho Mamas a few doors down, there were no hours limitations imposed on them either. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for your time. Have a nice holiday. Yeah, happy holidays. Next, 2014-526, 900 Southeast Avenue, AB Associates, care of Nate Prettle. <coughs> is an application to redevelop the former school property, construct two third floor additions onto the two-story school structure to house 37 dwelling units and to construct an additional three-story building housing four dwelling units as two multiple family detached dwellings with 57 off-street parking spaces on the lot. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. If uh, all those giving testimony can raise their hands and be sworn, please. I swear we're firm the testimony that you're about to this hearing will be the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. All right. Do we have staff reports? Yes. First, we have a letter from the Kansas Community Association indicating that the Kansas Community Board of Education and discussion that the community generally supports this project. The only real concern being the adequacy of off-street off parking being provided. The association believes that there should be at least one off-street parking space provided for each bedroom, which in this case would be 45 spaces, excluding the calculation of the parking required for the four new townhouse house units. As noted, the applicant will be providing 49 off-street parking spaces for these units. Additionally, the particular property is somewhat unique in that it has substantial frontage on two streets. Consequently, we do not believe the proposed project will impose an additional burden on the availability of on-street parking in the adjacent community. We also have a letter from a resident that indicates that they are writing in very strong support for the current plan to redevelop the property in the Canton neighborhood of Baltimore. I own and reside at the property directly across on Hudson Street from the school and have significant interest in the redevelopment of the site. And we have planning report. Thank you. Planning Department <clears throat> has been working with this applicant concerning the design of this structure, uh, including the possibility that there might be some historic uh, tax credit available for it. We are not sure yet at this point whether that will pan out. Regardless of that, the applicant is proposing to create a second principal structure on a residential lot. And for that reason, there will be a requirement that the Planning Commission approve such thing. Therefore, the Planning Department recommends approval of this project and this appeal, subject to the condition that the Planning Commission approves creation of multiple principal structures on a residential lot. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Barry, is your client uh, amenable to the conditions stated by the Planning Department? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Um, why don't you tell us about um, what's being proposed here? Okay, well, very quickly, I know the board's had a long day. Uh, this property is owned by the Archdiocese. They're actually members of the representative of the Archdiocese here, but it's under contract to Bill Link, who's to my right. 
uh, and his uh, partners that would redevelop the property as uh, has been explained to you in their plans. In fact, I think in your uh, uh, folders, these plans are uh, preliminary, but we've spent a lot of engineering time and a lot of architectural time to get to this point. And more importantly, a lot of community <coughs> time, having three meetings with the Canton Community Association, over 20 some people at each of those meetings, neighborhood residents in addition to their committee. We, the parish sponsored a meeting, had 50 or 60 people uh, from the parish, many of which live in the neighborhood, at least there's a representative of the parish who can speak uh, in support. And we did 200 flyers uh, blocks uh, surrounding the uh, uh, school building. Uh, and uh, we had a very successful meeting at that, which I think, like to say, led to the Canton Community Association's uh, support. So we've done a lot of outreach and a lot of um, uh, architectural work to preserve what is a neighborhood landmark, uh, to preserve it into a multifamily uh, development that not only will renovate uh, units within the uh, school building, but also build four rental townhouses on the parking lot uh, next to the school. Um, in addition to that, uh, parking will be provided in the basement of the building, uh, 37 spaces, and we have uh, 12 spaces at the moment, maybe, maybe hopefully more, but at least 12 spaces on the parking lot, which will be for the residents of the building, but also uh, dedicated for church use during uh, any kind of services that they provide. Uh, we're also providing an apartment for the uh, pastor of the, uh, of the church which is remaining during this, uh, uh, during this uh, renovation. Um, if you look at the uh, plans associated with it, uh, it's certainly unique given the row house nature of the, can of the Canton communities uh, surrounding it. Um, we uh, are only requiring very small variances as part of this. There's a, uh, a frankly, some discrepancy between the variances that planning thinks we need and recommended or the amount of variances for what we, we think we need and that basically is because uh, we did not have an actual survey of the property and so we're pacing our estimates on SDAT and city block plat information. I'm not sure what planning based theirs on uh, but we're close enough so that uh, meeting the parking requirements where we have a, a very minor floor of uh, ratio uh, a density ratio increase to ask for uh, and we would ask that uh, you find that the building and the property itself is unique enough that would meet that standard for variance uh, along with the community support and and maybe uh, Bill Link who's the developer and would be the contract purchaser of this is here if there are any questions and we also have some members of the parish that could maybe say a few words as well can community that if you I don't want to take up too much of your time. There's no one here <coughs> opposing it. <laughs> um, there's some issue around, well, what's the current use being made of the property? The uh, church has, uh, uses the, uh, some of the uh, old classrooms for offices within the property, and I believe there's a daycare, or there's some kind of, a pregnancy center in, uh, uh, if you could um, step forward and state your name for the record, please, sir. My name is Christopher Broughton. Okay. Um, and you're related to the state up there. Sorry. Uh, I am a resident of the area, and I am the chairperson of the church committee. Okay. Um, you were saying about the use that's currently being made of the building? Uh, the third floor is used as a rectory and offices for the church, and uh, there is a currently a pregnancy center uh, that resides in the first floor. Uh, the other facilities, uh, it's also used for AA temporarily, um, you know, on a couple of days a week. Okay. It sounds like it's almost sort of a community center almost kind of thing. There was a daycare approved in 07. Yeah. I guess that's no longer in operation. Okay. 
Well, what's the issue here, David? With well, that, I've got the, a conversion that, issue. Um, the issue is if the building is empty, it requires an ordinance to convert. Sure. So we needed something on the record to show that the building is not empty. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess we're. Yeah, that, that's that pr that provision <clears throat> actually is uh, going to be before the board in a separate case as to whether or not that interpretation, if it had, but in this case it was not a vacant building, so we don't fall under that. In the <coughs> Good. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good holiday. You too. Happy holidays, y'all. All right, next. <coughs> 2014 527 2305 Pressbury Street, Mohammed Naim. son of Mr. Amjad Abbas. He's the owner of this property, and I'm just here to represent him. Okay. If you can spell that last name for us. Abbasi. A-B-B-A-S-I. What's your first name? Sayam. S-A-Y-A-M. Okay. And sir, your name? Amjad Abbasi. A-M-J-A-D-A-B-B-A-S-I. A-M-J-A-D-A-B-B-A-S-I. Okay, um, and Mr. Basi, we have this as an application to add a grocery store and carry out food shop to the existing first floor dry cleaning establishment. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Will all those raising, will all those uh, giving testimony uh, raise their hands and be sworn, please? Raise your right hands, please. Can you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. And do we have staff reports? Yes. First, we have a uh, correspondence from the Office of Council of Mosby. He writes, the Smallwood Street Association and surrounding neighbors are very concerned about the plans for the property located at 2305 Pressbury Street. They have contacted my office for their concerns, and I stand with them in opposition. In 2013, the community experienced five murders in the area where the appellant plans to open his establishment. The building was used as a hub for crime and illegal activity, and it has taken the community nearly one year to remove the drug element that had established itself there. They are afraid that the requested business will attract that criminal element back into the area. Other concerns note that the fact that the appellant failed to afford both Councilman Mosby's office and the community of his intent to open this establishment in this community. In addition, the appellant did not post his sign that included the information about today's hearing until December 7th, which is less than 10 days notification requirement specific by the zoning. In the Smallwood Street Association's belief that yet another <coughs> corner store in their community is not needed especially if the owner is not willing to work with the community and that the business may have the potential to bring an unwanted element back into the neighborhood. And there's planning's report. Thank you. Planning department notes that this property is in an area zoned R6 residential and therefore this is a non-conforming use in that area. Changes of non-conforming use, which the applicant is proposing, include adding a grocery store and a carry-out food shop. However, a carry-out food shop is not listed as a permitted or a conditional use in the B1 district. Uh, it is listed, of course, in the B2 district. Therefore, 
The Department of Planning recommends disapproval of the portion of this appeal relating to a carryout food shop because the zoning code does not provide the board discretionary authority to approve a B2 use as a new nonconforming use in an R6 zoning district. The department has no objection to the remainder of the application. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, first question is, um, uh, when was the property posted? Uh, You're talking about the uh, property being on sale? No, the um, uh, the uh, the posting for the sign for this hearing. Uh, um, the, okay, because the letter 25. says it was up on the twenty on the seventh. No, twenty fifth. The twenty fifth. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any um, photographs or anything like that showing the yes. posting or something? Well, I have it on the phone. If does does it have a date or anything like that? Is no, it? no. Unfortunately, no. All right. Um, is there an argument about um, when the I mean, sign it, went up? Um, sorry, just okay. uh, if there. Just just a moment. Okay, sure. Um, we cannot if, just if, if you can. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I know better. Don't I? I'm so sorry. Who's the chair? Thank you. Ma'am, if you can identify yourself for the record. Okay. My name is Tamara Purnell, and I'm here representing the Small Street Association. So our argument is not when the sign was posted. Our argument is how the sign was posted. I apologize for not having um, copies, hard copies, but it is on the phone. Well, the councilman's letter says it wasn't posted until the 7th. So is there anyone who's taking the position that it wasn't posted until the 7th? Okay, this is the position we're taking. It was, when it was posted, it was posted, and it wasn't visibly posted. However, when we spoke to, or one of the gentlemen spoke to someone in the community, to one of the um, yeah. owners, they then provided where we could see the posting, and if you would look at the picture, then you would understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I'm what you're not saying arguing. Is, is that at some point, the um, it may have been posted timely, but it originally was posted in somewhere where you couldn't see it. Absolutely. And then sometime later, it was moved to a position where you could see it. You have to look at the picture. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> That is the way the. <laughs> Where did the phone stop, man? I'm sorry. <laughs> that is the way it was originally posted. Okay. Okay, so that it has obstructions there. It does, although I'll note that um, in looking at this, and I can give you. So I'm sorry. Um, but sure. in looking at it, the pertinent information for the date, time, subject matter of the hearing is visible. Um, I see the date and I see the room, but I don't see a time when I look at it. I see, correct. Um, there is uh, the, the part that's visible says, whom it may concern, yes. hereby given by the Board of Municipal and blank Peels that it will hold a public hearing Tuesday, December 16th, 2014, um, room 215 City Hall on appeal number 2014-527. Um, blank a permit to add a retail grocery blank carry out food shop to the existing dry cleaner premises located in an R6 zoning district. Um, now was it at some point or when was this photograph taken? When did you take that photograph? 
I'm, I'm Ronnie. I'm Ronnie Goodman. I'm sorry. I live in the um, community, but Goodman. Yes, sir. This actual picture was taken on um, November the 26th. Okay, so the picture was taken on November yes, the 26th. Okay, was there a period subsequently where it was um, where any obstructions were removed so that you could see more of the sign? Well, personally, I, I took this picture on 11-26, but I, myself, I noticed the, um, you could actually see the whole, the whole sign, um, and that was this weekend, which was Saturday. That's when I noticed it. Okay. Ma'am, you said that there's another yes, photograph. There <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, I see where it was scratched out around, I guess, it looks like there's some sort of mirroring. Yes, it's a tent. Window. Tent. Um, and it looks like it was scratched out around, or the, the tinting was scratched out around the letters so that to allow you to see the part that's behind it. And that's what the councilman was speaking of when he said as of November, as of December the 7th. Oh, I would, I would like to say something about this. Well, this was the scratching part took place like right, I believe two days after the sign was posted. Oh, oh he lost the... <laughs> just the um, say again. I want to say that the scratching process, when we scratched the whole thing up, took, uh, we did that like two days after the actual posting, so I don't, I don't see why uh, it, on the record it says December 7th or whatever it is, because we just scratched it out two days <coughs> after the November two, uh, 25th. And as you can see in this picture very clearly that it, you know, the whole thing can be read very easily. And we, I mean, we can see everyone in here and it seems like the neighborhood has been aware of, aware of the whole situation. So uh, I don't think this should matter. I guess it doesn't matter to you guys. All right. Um, so, do you guys? I have, um, because I don't need to do this, but I have some issue that may complicate the whole matter. Okay, let's do that first. <laughs> um, this application is for 2305 Pressbury Street. This request, I believe, is for both 2305 Pressbury and 2307 which are two separate lots. Um, the business covers both properties. Um, in 1968, the Zoning Board approved the extension of the tarreling and pressing business to include 2307. They were never formally consolidated. But they never consolidated the lots. And uh, we do not have a floor plan that indicates exactly what portion of those properties they're asking for. Uh, All right. Um, What it seems like to me is that um, in addition to the posting issue, um, because I do look through our data sheet. David, do we have any kind of a drawing that's submitted? No. And Mr. Boston, do you have a floor plan, a drawing, a layout that you're intending to submit? Yes, today. we do, but I mean, I don't have it on here right now. Okay, all right. Um, because the point that Mr. Tanner is raising is that when we, and we've had um, 
properties like this in the past that have um, some time in the past where the um, properties um, were maybe in practice consolidated. Um, on paper, they were not. And so they remain separate and distinct parcels of property. There's 2305 and there's 2307. And it looks as if this use spans both properties. Um, and it's um, one of the things that we need in order to um, consider um, requests like this is we need to understand where everything is, what the layout is of the, um, of the uses. Because you know, you've got, I guess, an existing layout of the laundromat and you're also now adding this um, uh, grocery mm -hmm. and carry out to it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uses that are going on in one space, and it's one space that crosses property lines. Um, and just from our end of it, what we need in that instance is we need to have a layout, a floor plan, to, so that we can understand how everything operates inside the four walls of the store. Um, you've said that you have something like that, but you don't have it for us to see today. Mm -hmm. um, overlapping that, there is the issue regarding posting that I think we need to sort of figure out here in a moment. Um, but um, I think that either one of those issues um, is going to present an obstacle to going forward today. Um, but our, if we can push back for a moment and deliberate on this posting issue. That's true, but you know, if you go to court, then you might have notice of a legal proceeding against you. But if you do not have been properly served or whatever, even though you didn't have to do that, but you still have the expression or other people have called it or Okay. Uh, we have the layout, a picture of it. 
It's supposed to be a grocery store, as you can see here. I mean, it's just a map of what we're going to be looking at. I mean, it's not very really clear, <laughs> but... I'm, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so this is what. It's supposed to be a grocery store at the counter and, and all that. And understood. Okay. Um, this is where we are. Mm -hmm. um, there's a issue regarding posting. Um, it was at some point deemed significant enough to where. Um, uh, someone on behalf of the applicant, I can imagine, scraped off the obstructing tinting so that all of the sign was visible. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, there's the issue regarding the property address um, where there, you know, we've got the application for one um, parcel of property that is 2305, but you're in fact, um, uh, the subject of the appeal are both pieces of property, that is two, uh, 2305 and 2307. Oh. Um, and is that untrue? Well, we were sold, the property was sold to us two months earlier as a single property, as 2305. Okay, um, okay. well, I, the problem there is is that um, it, normally when property is sold, mm -hmm. you know, you get a deed and you get some sort of a survey and it shows you what the layout is of the property. It also typically will get a title report that sure. is gonna tell you the history of the uses of land and it'll show that, you know, that you've got, um, that you, what you're in fact dealing with are two mm -hmm. distinct pieces of property. It, the insides may, what's called intercommunicate, that is you can walk from one piece to the next inside, but they are in fact still legally separate properties. Um, so there's that issue, and then in addition, uh, as I said, we don't have a floor plan. I see your photograph there. Um, I think even that needs a little bit more um, description added to it, because although I saw what appeared to be, um, I guess, shopping aisles um, laid out there, um, there is no, um, uh, you know, I understand that there's a laundromat that's going to be operating there, or it already operates there. Um, and I didn't see that reflected in the drawing. Um, so we'll need to have a posting of the property um, that's unobstructed um, so that it can be seen for the entire 21 day period, I believe. Um, and that also identifies that both pieces of property are the subject of the appeal, that is 2305 and 2307. Um, and before the hearing, um, we'll need to have from you a floor plan um, laying out, and it doesn't have to be like something prepared by an architect or something like that, um, but laying out where everything is, where the laundromat is, where the grocery is supposed to be, where the ingress and egress is, what the dimensions are inside, that kind of thing. Um, uh, one thing that may be required, um, as you know, if, if we were to uh, give you any kind of approval for this, one thing that would uh, likely be required is that there be some sort of formal consolidation of the lots, um, uh, since the properties have been, in practice, merged. We'd probably likely uh, uh, condition any kind of approval on a legal consolidation of those, which has other ramifications as well. But for today's purposes, um, because of the issue regarding posting, because of the issue regarding the property address, and because of the issues regarding the floor plan, we can't proceed today. Um, our next available opening on our docket is the 27th of January. Um, we don't have hearings the remainder of this month just because of the holiday that comes in in the middle of it. Um, and our first docket for the um, new year is already um, packed at this point. Um, so the next opening would be on the 27th. Um, and you'd need to have your sign up in sufficient time in advance of that hearing so that you don't have an issue regarding posting anymore. And you also need to remember to correct the address so that it shows 2305 and 2307. Um, and not have any kind of... Uh, I, I do not seem to understand the fact that um, how am I supposed to uh, 
get the permission from 2305 uh, into this process? How do I involve this? Because I do not own the property. Um, okay, are you saying that 2305 and 2307 don't? It seems to me like they're not one property since there is no connection between them. Um, they, they seem to be two different properties and the property 2305 was sold as one. So uh, I don't seem to understand the Anybody fact, how, how am I supposed to deal with that? How do I disconnect them? There's a 16 inch um, wall that goes through these two buildings. So you're not asking to use any portion of we are using 2305. 2305, and that's it. but it's not 2307? No, it's not 2307, yes. So you're not using any <coughs> No, no. So what's going to have to pay? I do not, I do not know. Because what we've got is that um, back in, I guess, 1968, well, there, there was might. a okay. um, application to extend what was in then a tailoring and pressing business into 2307 and then install the dry cleaning facility as well. Um, so that's where the understanding came from that. Sure, I, I totally understand two uses that. uses work yes. together. But, but you're saying that the buildings yes. were separate. The, were, yes. So okay, so they weren't consolidated. Yes. Um, they were kept separate. Okay. You still have a problem with posting. You still have the problem with the lack of a floor plan. We still have the situation, as I said, sure. where we can't proceed to that. Yes, sir, if you can identify yourself there. My name is Ira Booker. The building he's talking about, there is no separation wall in that building anymore. It's one, it's all that's been set, taken out. Well, that's why there, there is a separation. Well, when, only, did, when well, did it go up? Because it was always. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if you have been inside the property okay. recently, well, but I'm well, sorry. Okay. <coughs> These are issues that mm -hmm. we're going to have to hash out. Sure. Um, that's, as Mr. Tanner said, that's why we need a floor plan. Mm -hmm. If you also want to, um, since you know that this is going to be an issue, if you can take some photographs of the sure. inside. You, you said sure. that there's a 16-inch brick wall mm -hmm. running through the middle of them, of the properties. Yeah. You can take a photograph sure. of it and show that. That's going to resolve it. Uh, okay. Okay. Another concern that I have is um, when we appear next on the next court, there's going to be more issues that are going to be brought up. If, if we can bring all of those issues and we can address them in the next hearing so we don't waste any more court time, that would be awesome. Well, I think that the idea is that we're going to resolve them there. The problem sure. with posting is that's a threshold issue. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's an argument that's raised about improper posting, and there has been here, mm -hmm. um, it's a issue that has to be overcome before we can even get to anything else. So he wants to know that if, if uh, the posting is still an issue. Is the posting issue today? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. He's saying that uh, the day he posted the sign, at that night, we were the the whole tent was removed. But but you were told that it was two days later. Yes. Yeah, but is it that's the major? The other part of the rest of the sign is Okay, there was there was some part that was removed, like the time, the important part of it, but the rest was removed two days later. And uh, another concern that we have is the fact that we cannot remove any glasses, and the other window part, it's broke, and we cannot replace any any windows. There is nowhere to put the um, post. Yes, we cannot post outside because there was one another auction uh, posting before this posting and that was removed by one, uh, I believe one of the okay. neighbors and it what, was. What seems apparent to me is that at some point along the process mm -hmm. after the sign went up, there was tint that was removed that obstructed the lettering. So all that you need to do is have that sign up continuously unobstructed for 21 days and you're not dealing with the problem. Sure. 
So simply do that again, and you won't have an issue anymore regarding posting. Okay. Okay. And what else does the court require us to do in terms of uh, other um, other things that you said the listing? You said the um, the posting actually, mm -hmm. and also the floor plan. And other yes. than that, if there's anything else. Yes, um, I said that you you know at least that there's an issue regarding the interior layout of mm -hmm. the property, whether or not the two um, uh, addresses um, are connected inside or not. If they're sure, we can get the proof of that. Um, so photographs, that sort yes. of thing, would be helpful. I mean, yes. I can't tell you how to prepare your case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can tell you what the issues are that have been brought up today, and you'll want to be able to address those when you go forward. Sure. Okay. See you. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry. Ma'am, we're off the record. No, I'm, I'm going to give you our uh, position. If, if you that's fine. Time. You can give it. If you can just pass it up. Thank you. Yeah. You're doing fine. Thank you. Next, 2014-528, 1730-32 Bank Street, AB Associates, care of Nate Prevo. Good afternoon again, Mr. Prevo. Good afternoon. All right. We have this as an application to use the premises to house eight efficiency units as a multiple family detached dwelling with two off-site, off-street parking spaces on a portion of the adjacent lot formerly known as 321 South Broadway. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, all those giving testimony, can you raise their hand to be sworn, please? Yes, we are affirming the testimony about keeping this hearing to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Yes. All right. Do we have staff reports? Yes. Uh, first, we have a letter from the Upper Fell Point Improvement Association. They write that their membership voted to oppose the proposed development because it does not feature adequate parking to accommodate the proposed amount of units. The proposed appeal conflicts with the uh, association's established land use guidelines. The guidelines state no new dwelling units should be added without provisions for off-street parking spaces. The guidelines also state that the proposed development having less than two off-street parking spaces per dwelling unit will be opposed. We have a similar letter in support from the Fells Prospect Community Association. We have a letter from the Canton Community Association indicating that they search that they have no objections to the proposed project. I have a letter from the Fells Point Community Organization. They write that like every new project that is developed in this area that does not provide adequate parking, increases the lack of available on-street parking for those of us who do reside in this neighborhood. Uh, President of the Fells Point, Upper Fells Point Community, Fells Prospect. She doesn't identify her association. It's the president, Miss uh, Edward Marchini. She's a neighbor. Oh, he's a neighbor. Okay. Those of us who live in the area near this project are very aware of how dense the area has become. There are numerous multiple family dwelling units across the street that are grandfathered in as acceptable without providing off street parking. Approximately half of the block away from this site, Broadway, is metered. The other block, Eastern Avenue, is also metered. Right across the street from this site is a veterinary hospital, which takes up valuable residential parking spots. If you do the math, you can project to have either zero parking issues 
if all the renters have no vehicles, eight vehicles if each unit has one vehicle, or 16 vehicles if each unit has two cars per unit, that is, a couple who rents the unit. Those cars need, cars need to be parked somewhere, and that somewhere will be on our streets. There are two letters that repeat that, and there's planning report. Thank you. Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this property <clears throat> is residentially zoned and the, the last uses authorized for the property were offices and an art gallery, which are non-conforming uses. Therefore, the proposal would help to extinguish a non-conforming use in this area. The applicant does require variances, or the application does require variances for lot area and for off-street parking. The applicant has discussed the off-street parking situation with staff of the planning department and indicated that they have in fact two parking spaces deeded to this property or on behalf of this property on an adjoining property. Therefore, the Department of Planning has no objection to this appeal as it was originally filed for a total of eight efficiency units. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Preto. Okay, uh, you know we've been here for a while, so I want to be relatively brief explaining some of the variance uh, issues before I get into the main issue from the letters of the So what we have here is a building that was formerly part of the St. Patrick's Church complex, which is on the corner of Bank and Broadway. In 2006, the St. Patrick's Church decided to subdivide the property. I believe they still own the actual church and sell off three additional parcels. And with that, two parking spaces were deeded to this property in the St. Patrick's Church lot, which is accessed off Gulf Street. You know, distance from the property line to this is probably no more than 20 feet, if that. I'm not sure if they're actually contiguous, but there's an easement, permanent easement that goes from our property onto theirs. Our proposal is to convert this building to eight efficiency units. There'd be four on the first floor, four on the second floor, access off of Bank Street. And this is also a um, historic renovation project. We're seeking historic tax credits. It'll be built to National Park Service standards. I should mention the most important factor in my mind is that the historic use of this building was actually for eight dwelling units. So not only are we extinguishing an existing non-conforming use, we're also restoring the historic character to the building as well as the historic use. So I forgot to mention, I have here with me Travis Seal, who is partners with the developer, Jake Wittenberg. And um, so in regarding the variances, we're seeking a variance for minimum lot area. By right, we're allowed seven efficiency units. We're see seeking an eighth efficiency units. The reason for this is to reestablish the old historic use. The building that was designed and always used is eight units. We believe we meet the variance standards first for uniqueness, and we're in a largely residential block. It's almost entirely row homes. This is the only large property that has frontage on two residential streets. Some of the other St. Patrick's Church buildings front on Broadway, which is a commercial street. Here we're on Register, which is a small alley street, as well as Bank Street. The provision for hardship comes about that this property was actually rezoned in 2007 as part of a Fells Point comprehensive rezoning. It was formerly B23, where the eight units was a permitted use and well as the parking that was provided for this was also permitted. Now once that rezoning took place, now to reestablish the historic use, we need to seek variances both for parking and for, um, and for lot area. Didn't that change have some other effects as well? In that um, the, uh, the R8 zoning creates some restrictions as far as conversions? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe you want to elaborate on that. I'm not sure, sure. where you're going with this. Um, so you're in, you said that it formerly was a B2 zone? B23, correct. Okay. And now it's an R8 zone. Yes. Um, it's, uh, the building is unoccupied? No, the building, so, and I, I thought you may bring that up. I can pull out permit history. This building, once it was converted, this is actually right before the conversion, it was approved for use as office space, art galleries, and artist studios, mm -hmm. and that use has not been extinguished to this date. I don't believe there are not any office, uh, art galleries or artist studios in there, but there has been office space. There's no, never been a vacant building notice. I think Travis can testify to the fact that there's still occasional office space in the building. So. Well, the question is, what's it been actively used for? I mean, I, mm -hmm. I know that you, you can have a building or you can have space that's um, um, 
you know, that you may intend to use in a certain way. Sure. But it's you know there's no active use that's being made of it because there's no one who's currently in there. Um, well, so I think the, the the owner has used it on and off for office space since they pulled that permit. There's no record that it, you know that use has been extinguished through my conversations both with Travis, the his partner Jake Wittenberg, and the they're the contract purchase of the building right now and the existing owner that they is not a vacant building. They have used it as office space has never gone vacant from where there may not be people in there every day, but it's not gone vacant for more than 12 months. The city's never issued a vacant building notice. It's never been qualified as a vacant building. I think the zoning, I've met with the zoning administrator about this, about the provision you're talking about. He felt that this is a zoning board issue, not a city council issue. The planning department also did not feel that this was something that needed to go to the city council. So that's why I believe we're in front of you, you today. Okay. Um, okay. David, do we have anything else on that? No, that's, um, that was the question, whether or not. Yeah. And I agree with my and the zoning administrator uh, did not raise that issue. Uh, but I think we need at least the record straight that it was not a vacant, empty building, uh, because that would require an order. Correct. I mean, that's that's my answer for it. That you know, everything that we have been told by the current owner, by the previous owner, by the zoning administrator, planning, and our you know walking through the building has led us to believe that it's not a vacant building and that we are eligible for this conversion. All right. Okay. One, um, actually, two other small things. I regarding the variances, I'm of the belief that we're not actually seeking a parking variance based on the zoning codes provision to allow um, us only to provide parking in excess of the historic use at the time of the zoning code enactment in 1971 which at that time was one dwelling unit seven rooming units under the existing zoning that has a parking requirement of eight unit uh, of eight parking spaces which is what our parking requirement is today so is my belief that we'd only be required to provide parking in excess of that. That being said, we are providing these two parking spaces. So it's my understanding that we're only going for the minimum lot area variance, which is minimal. I think that use has been lost. Has that, when okay. they've got a that, permit that, yeah, for an art question. gallery and offices, it's no longer. Okay. That, that, that's fine. You know, I, my conversations with several people, it's how the city's actually interpreted that, whether or not if the use changes, that that is in effect. If that's your if, um, opinion, then then we do need a parking barrier. If that use hadn't changed, okay, that's you would sure. get credit. Okay, but yeah, that's fair. I mean, in the greater scheme of things, we're still echoing the old historic use and the parking requirements the same. But yes, in that case, we we do need a parking variance. In regards to the parking, I mean, you, you noticed all the letters. That was the main thing. I think there's two community associations who felt that they were opposed to the lack of parking, two community associations, I think one in support, one with no objection. You know, our providing lack of parking is not due to any effort on the developers or lack of effort on the developers' part. We have reached out to every possible off-street parking place we could, you know, we could find. There's a 16, 18 Bank Street, the Martin Seafood Building, Fells Point Station on the corner of Bank and Broadway, uh, various real estate brokers. We put an open bounty at a community association meeting saying if anyone can find additional spaces, we're willing to pay significantly for them. There just isn't any off-street parking to be found in this general <laughs> area. I think there's other developers who will echo that sentiment. So you know, we feel confident that we've done you know, everything we can. We're going to continue, you know, should we receive approval today, continue to look for additional spaces. But you know, at this point, that there just aren't any available. They said that there are two spaces that you are offering with it? Two, oh, two, two spaces in the St. Patrick's Church lot, which were deeded to this property as part of the subdivision and are, will be used for potential tenants of this building. And where is that located with sure. respect to the property? It's, uh, it's uh, you can see in that. This one? It's this parking lot right here. Okay, so yeah. it's pretty yeah, adjacent. This is our building. Yeah. And there's actually an easement that goes back here. It's within 300 feet. I think okay. I mentioned earlier, I think it's maybe within 20 feet of the property line. Okay. Yeah. And so unless there's any questions, I think I provided a basis for the variance standards. Yeah. Question? All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, 2014-537, uh, 1563 through 1567 North Fulton Avenue. Okay. Um, here we go. Uh, Adam Carballo. Carballo. All right, and Mr. Carballo, we have this as an application to house four dwelling units on the second floor and use the first floor as a grocery store, is that correct? Correct. All right. If you can raise your hand and be sworn, please. Please swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing to the truth, the whole truth, the nothing but the truth. All right. Do we have staff reports? I have one from planning. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> after reviewing the application, the department has no objection to this appeal. Thank you. All right. Okay, um, Mr. Caballo, why don't you tell us about what um, you are intending to do at this uh, property address? Well, the, the current owner purchased the property about two and a half months ago. It had historically been used as a church. Prior to that, it was used as some type of theater. Uh, it's a very large building. Um, it was, uh, it's approximately 37 and a half feet wide by 142 feet deep. I believe it's uh is like a fire or something that was there yeah i'm, I'm getting to that yeah there's okay. um it's two floors and there is we believe there is a basement to it um it did experience some type of fire uh maybe looks like maybe five five ten years ago mm -hmm. somewhere in that range the f the roof has collapsed as the second floor floor diaphragm mm -hmm. the first floor floor uh, diagram uh, diaphragm has also been compromised um so when you visit the property today, and actually you can even see it on Google, um, the entire roof is completely collapsed in. The exterior wall exists, the front facade exists, yes. but the intention is you that- you can see all the way down. Yeah, you can see all the way down. There's, there's trees growing in it. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a mess, you know, quite honestly. Um, the intention is, is that we would uh, restructure the floor joists and the roof joists um, we're not uh, requesting any additions onto the property. We wouldn't change the footprint. We wouldn't change the original uh, building height. We just want to reinstate the roof and reinstate the interior. Um, as I mentioned, it was typical. It was traditionally used as some type of, you know, an assembly use, um, either a church or, you know, we believe a theater maybe, you know, generations ago or, or maybe, you know, could have been 30 or 40 years ago. Um, we intend on using, you know, uh, using as a grocery store on the ground floor, and then the second floor um, to be used as uh, four dwelling units. Um, in this particular neighborhood, there it's sort of a, a food desert area. There's not a lot of opportunity for uh, grocery, uh, you know, access to grocery and fresh, fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables in the area. So we, the owner, kind of sees it as an opportunity to provide that amenity for the na for the neighborhood. Um, also, uh, most people in this area uh, tend to walk. There's not a whole lot of private vehicle, <coughs> private vehicle ownership in this area. Mm -hmm. um, luckily for our property, there is a bus stop immediately out in front of the bus stop, uh, right in front of the building. So we see that we see that as an opportunity for people that can ride the bus to the grocery store, you know, purchase groceries and then return back to their to their home. If not, just simply walk. Um, a couple of issues we have with the property for zoning, which prompts our our appeal. Uh, one, we have an existing full lot coverage building. Um, in this, uh, in the zoning requires a side and rear setback. Um, we wish to retain the existing envelope of the building. Uh, also, uh, if we and uh, Mr. French can can chime in, it is in a chap district, so we don't want to actually compromise the historic integrity of the building by having to reduce the size of the building. Um, so that's sort of our, our, our first um, appeal. The second is the parking. Um, again, you know, it's a full lot coverage building. We want to provide some type of use that can be a positive use that could provide an amenity for the neighborhood. Um, that the issues that we've got yeah. that you're here on are conditional conversion. Okay. 
Um, yes. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it was partly we we were you know seeking seeking a relief on the parking requirement is 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 you know as well as a conversion. Well, the the point I'm saying is that to our knowledge, you don't have an issue with parking or with variances. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then um, I guess the, the, if you'd like to disabuse us of that. No, then absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> even though the building is, yeah. uh, no. even though the building is virtually gutted, we again we can't require parking until your request exceeds what the parking requirement was for the church. Okay. Parking for the church is based on the seating capacity. Correct. We don't know what that was. Mm -hmm. But we know it was more than four uh, cars. You know? Correct. So you weren't cited for parking. Not that parking is not an issue. You still need to try to address it. Correct. Yeah. But it doesn't require variance. Okay. All right. Fair enough. You said the church sold the property to somebody else. So you're not representing the church. You're representing I'm. I'm representing the current owner. When we were Which going. Is? Um, it, it's Anna uh, uh, Zam Zambraro. Um, it's it's on the application. Yeah, I can't remember how to pronounce her last name properly. Um, at the time of the application, it was in the middle of sale, so I put both na both the seller and the buyer on in case there was a delay of sale by the time we had the hearing. Do you know to what extent uh, the new owner has spoken with the community? Um, I, I believe they reached out to, you know, you know, you know, local community group. I mean, he says he has. I don't have any belief, reason to believe he hasn't. We um, did. Um, you know, sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Uh, we did get an email from. Uh, Inez Rob Fulton Community Association, and they expressed. Uh, concern and uh, and they're not in support of this request because they have uh, several stores on Fulton Avenue already from North Avenue uh, Edmonton Avenue the community association does support the building being used for housing only because this is a residential area of the community can can you tell us more about the grocery store itself um, the grocery store will just be a, a small privately owned grocery store. It's, it's not going to be a, a chain of any kind. Um, it is the intention that it would be mo it would be fresh fruits and vegetables as well as you know non-perishable items. Um, so it would be a mix. It wouldn't be you know uh, like it. It's not going to be like a like a sort of corner bodega or carryout shop. Um, it is meant to be a small community grocery store. Um, it kind of surprises me. That's the first we've heard of any type of opposition. Um, along this one section of, of Fulton Avenue, um, there are several other commercial um, businesses. Most of them are boarded up. They're, and in fact, it's, um, you know, I'm surprised that they're sort of in, you know, have any opposition to because they're, all the other businesses are basically closed. Um, here's a person that's seeing an opportunity and trying to put some money and some revitalization in the corner. Um, I think it's going to be nothing but positive for the area. Um, it, it, it won't be any alcohol sales there. I don't believe there are going to be any tobacco sales either. Um, it's purely meant to be a grocery store. Do, does the current plan design uh, call for uh, sort of this typical plexiglass kind of layout? Or is it, is it an open grocery store? I, I believe it's supposed to be an open grocery store. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any, um, at least, floor, you know, the, yeah, there hasn't been any expression of having like a, The floor you know, plan show and aisles with shelves with cashiers at the front of the building. Correct. Yeah, like I said, it's not meant to be like a corner shop where the, the attendant or the cashier is sort of barricaded off in a glass box, um, plexiglass box. It's meant to be a, you know, small neighborhood grocery store. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, is the, is the owner amenable to the idea of meeting 
with uh, additional community members to go through this yeah, one? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Which would mean if we're picking up with who went through today? Um, not necessarily. Um, but where, what was it that you had in mind? I mean, that it seemed like there's, well, uh, that there's you know, uh, whether we, the, the idea of having uh, an MOU in place with the community may make some, may make some sense. Um, I mean, I think I, the, I think what the community association um, had. had was there any kind of a meeting that you went to or you had with the community association? I, d I didn't personally, uh, you know, but I know that I know that he has had some discussions with people in the, in the community. Um, I'm not sure if that meant a an actual formal meeting or if it was an informal discussion with them. By way, by way of presenting, here's the plans, here's the layout. Yeah, I mean, I, I provided him with plans and he's actually presented them to right you know two members of the community yeah, including so the adjacent adjacent business owners and also so in full disclosure i live in that community right and i should if it if there was a real effort made i mm -hmm. would have been made aware okay of, of the, the plans right. just by virtue of sort of uh my my uh active my action my act, what's the word i'm looking for activity activity, activity involvement. involvement in the community okay so I'm just not sure that the community has really had a chance to hear the plans, uh, minus uh, maybe a couple of people that are represented in the email that, that, that Mr. Tanner received. Uh, okay. I would like you to, know. I I'm personally would like no. to request, request to meet with the owner to go through it. Okay. That's and, and bring additional, several additional community members to the table to. Okay. To I mean, do you, do you so. see of any, I mean, what I've presented today is that of any great concern personally, or personally for me no but yeah. I, you know i'm not speaking on behalf of the community okay all right um well that would um when we have um uh, postponement issues i mean what we normally um, advise uh applicants <coughs> to do is to try to reach out to um, the um, community associations that operate within the um, uh, the applicable neighborhoods that uh, that they're looking to um, either acquire a piece of property or have some kind of change in use, um, and um, connect with them to um, try to um, explain to the community association what the uh, What's intended, and what, um, uh, um, uh, and basically what the plan, what the property owner's plans are, mm -hmm. and to um, give the community an opportunity to provide feedback, um, and sometimes that um, take the form of a memorandum of understanding. Sometimes take the form of just a letter from the community that just says, "We're enthusiastic about it. We love it." Right. Um, uh, the, um, uh, as always, the um, desire uh, to, or rather, the request for postponement um, comes from the applicant, um, and you know, we can't twist your arm and say, well, yes, you, know, you have to request a postponement so that you can do this. Um, uh, it's, you know, if you're going to be locating in a neighborhood, it, you know, it could be advisable, um, but you're in under no obligation to make such a request but so the choice is really yours i mean i guess given the amount of time we've already spent with this i mean you know it could we make it a condition yeah, yeah i mean can we make yeah. some type of conditional or halfway i mean sure you know, i mean what we get some type of approval you know contingent on yeah, and what further sometimes meetings what we'll do is sometimes what we also will do is yeah. um it'll be uh contingent on or as a condition, there'll be, um, you know, that the uh, applicant is supposed to um, uh, conduct a meeting with the community association with you know, X amount of time um, following any kind of decision. So then it gives um, you the opportunity or the ability. And, you know, sometimes you may not be able to set that meeting up within um, the requisite amount of time, but so long as you can show that, you know, you've been diligent, you've made the attempt, and maybe yeah. it's just, you know, that scheduling hasn't worked out. Yeah, I, I think that's a happy medium. I think that's... Sure. More than 
reasonable, and I, okay. I think the, the owner would have no problem with that. Okay, great, we'll do that. Um, All right. I, I thank the chairman for clarifying that because I didn't want to suggest that my, my request was in any way representing of the board telling you you had to yeah. do a proposal. Yeah, I, I think that's a proposal. Yeah, I, I think it's fair. I mean, you know, we have the best intentions here. We're trying to do something good here. So. Yeah, I think it's a pretty straightforward request. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything further? No, not for me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll go off record. So thank you. Uh, what, I'll, what I'll do is uh, also get uh, the uh, council, uh, the council of Mosby, uh, to come to that meeting as well. So, so thank you. Yeah, the only one I've got a question mark here about is um, no, the I had a question mark about was uh, five oh two Bell Avenue. That was the one where there was the problem with the former tenant. So yeah, that puts the current the former grocery store that's been operating without permit. Yeah. Um, I said it was, it does appear that at some point yes. prior to that it was, was legally yes. established and it just continued in that and may have, may have perhaps. I was okay with it. Yeah, I was pretty much too, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do want to talk about the very first one. Yeah, refresh my recollection. I'm trying to remember. It was the beauty salon. Yeah. Uh -huh. And had emailed and said it sounded like it might be might be mm -hmm. a good idea, but then you know my well, councilman. Uh, well, you know, a lot of what a lot of that was really that neither. One that one was really frank. Well, a lot of that discussion was neither here nor there. Um, the really the issue was the question of discontinuance of use, whether there was um, authority to resurrect it. Um, uh, yeah, I think that if I'm remembering the, um, the history correctly, um, at the time of the uh, when he acquired it, um, uh, you know, he made improvements, um, things were permitted, and then there was a period where he couldn't locate a tenant mm -hmm. um, to go into the space. And that's why you know, our decision had lapsed, or our prior approval had lapsed. Um, it was a down market um, at that time. This is in 2011. Um, and you know, he's got a viable tenant that's ready to go. Um, there, you know, he it wasn't a situation where um, you know he wasn't diligent in trying to locate someone. From the testimony, it was that you know he. Went, you know, he engaged real estate agents. He listed it himself. He did various things to try to find someone, and just couldn't. And now he's found someone that's ready, willing, and able to go in there. Um, and the beauty like salon the had some kind of had, you know, apparently some kind of attraction to the community. So. Yeah, well, and I thought it was noteworthy that, despite uh, Council of Stokes' representation, there wasn't any letters of opposition. Yes, that's and that's um, you know. Note the footprint uh, of the geography, but uh, I could, I would, I can't see any reason why he wouldn't be granted. Um, well, it, well, it came down to, and this is one of the questions I asked David, is that you know, the problem comes from um, it's a um, you know, the issue in the case was abandonment and discontinuance of the use. I think that there clearly had been a discontinuance of use as a commercial operation. But again, I don't think it was because of a lack of diligence right. by the property owner. I think that given that 
the improvements were already uh, just have already been made at this point. Um, we can't you know, change it and make it something else. Um, you know, the, the saying that the, um, the ability to use that um, space as a commercial <laughs> space is lost for all time. You know, I was the, if the direction I was going in is that because there had been um, such a um, history at least testified to by the applicant. Um, you know, it's a bit of a stretch, but I think that we can, um, uh, uh, I think that the basis is there to argue that this is a situation where if you don't have a, if it's not used as a commercial use in this way, then you know, what other use is going to be made of it? Um, uh, because, you know, the changes are already been made. It's already been expanded. It's already been built out a certain way, um, and there was no lack of diligence by the applicant. Um, you know, I think that it was you know, probably mostly economic circumstance that led to the discontinuance. So that's what my yeah. thought was. Compared to the testimony given in 513, which is that was one where the guy said it had been used since 05. Yes. Right. No. 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 Yeah. I mean, uh, right. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that he went into that one, and he, you know, he either purchased the property or, um, yes. has suggested. Yes, and that's the section. Um, that is. Um, that um, and that was one where you know he either was a prospective purchaser of that lot, or he'd already purchased it, and he said you know it hadn't been used in ten years or nine years. Um, I haven't done anything. And I haven't done anything to improve it. Um, so it's a group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, One sixty six and Kevin Grums. Yeah, that was. We were which, last time we had put we were going to put restrictions, restrictions on. Yeah, and I was just going to I mean that was really just like a correcting the record thing. Um, you know, I think that we should have the same limitations that we placed on it before. Um, you know, no alcohol, no BYO, um, no. Did we have? You have no promoted events. Um, I couldn't remember if we had a limitation on hours in the prior one. Yeah, it was midnight, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. so like the only thing that was on the record, which I was like, damn it, time. So you guys agreed, or at least he agreed last time that he would shut the party down at midnight and make sure everyone was out of the parking lot at 1 30. Because one of the complaints is that people leave yeah. the mm -hmm. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. So that's what you guys said. Yeah, that's, said. Yes. that's a, I mean, that's. Yeah, a whole lot of residential tents right across the table. Yeah. 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 No, you didn't say that, that he, you didn't put it as a condition, but you said he had to close. He said he would get everyone out, <coughs> but you said he had to shut down by midnight. We said the party's got to end at midnight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was the only thing that wasn't restated this time. Well, this time the community brought up the issue that they think there's some. Well, and that yeah. as well? I, well, I don't think that that's permitted anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that's something. It, he's not in the zone for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, that's not permitted anyway. Um, and. From you know what I understood the testimony to be, that had to, that uh, although it was the same location, um, he's moving into this location, and it was another tenant or a former mm -hmm. tenant who did that. Right. Right. Um, and I'm gonna normally those kinds of things are associated with alcohol consumption, <laughs> and so I think that if there is no alcohol consumption, there's no alcohol sales, there's no BYO, there's not gonna be an issue with that. He didn't say it didn't happen. He just said that wasn't me. Hey, yes, yes, yes. He was pretty clear on that. Uh, question on 364. We're clear that that's restaurant only, no care. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And um, the. Um, well, we could give it to you as an accessory, but I'm worried that it would become 
It'll become the primary, yes. He was adamant. He said, no, it's going to be a Spanish restaurant, and he was talking about it. So, okay. <laughs> these, I mean, we revert back to the deal with these unusable lot. I, well, it always comes down to the developer saying you know, it's such a financial hardship. And it's a, you know, that, you know, it's impossible that it would be used for anything else. And that's a, that's debatable. And there's with, um, I moved two minds. I can't really sort of figure out where I'm going to come down on that issue. But with the other one, um, I guess the first one on Broadway. That was a situation where, you know, A, he had a pre he had an approval and he made changes to the property right. um, in reliance on that and then he was stuck because of economic circumstances. He couldn't get it leased up and it sat there and then it lapsed and then, you know, it sounded like he might have gotten jerked around here or there about some representations that may or may not have been made. but. Um, he was being diligent in what he was doing, um, and in these, you know, I mean, maybe I'm not, maybe I don't have a good view of the process, um, but it would seem to me that if you're looking to, you know, invest in some properties, and maybe it's just simply the way that these auctions run, um, uh, you know, th th there may not be an opportunity for that. Although I thought that there are, where they put out listings for, um, for the receivership auctions, mm -hmm. oh, uh -huh. and you know where you can check, and you're if you're diligent, you shouldn't be in this situation right. where you should be able to say, well, you know, this is the property, these are the properties I'm looking at bidding on, and then you do your your diligence and you find out what the zoning is and sort of what their condition is. Um, but they don't go through that at the time of the auction because of, yes. I, I, but, I've bought several mm -hmm. from that, and, and they'll get it. It's not, it's not uh, the, the uh, auctioneer's responsibility. Yeah. Well, it. I know the auctioneer right. doesn't, but I mean, is it possible that the buyer, when you go in, you know which properties are up for auction? You know, is there an opportunity to do it, to do that kind of due diligence? Or is it just, you know, that the notice goes out on a um, Monday that there's going to be an auction on Friday and there's like 50 properties and there's just simply no time. Yeah, and I think oh, that's inundated to the point where they're probably not going to get into the fact that... Uh, well, know, not, not the receiver, not the receiver. I'm talking about someone going into the auction, someone bidding, right. a buyer. Right. Is there time or is there opportunity for a buyer to do due diligence before they go in and put money down on the property. Yeah, there is, but I, so I guess my only question is if, you know, particularly from a new developer, uh, if new to Baltimore and the zoning codes, what's going to suggest you to think that it had reverted back to single family dwelling? That's the problem. Yeah. The city doesn't do a job. That's why I was suggesting to him that, you know, and regardless of the outcome of this one, it be, going forward, you have to figure out a way to, to think about think. Don't just assume because there's two panels that it's still two dwellings. So that's the thing that I'm struggling with here on this one is this, that it's a question of diligence. But we've sent others away. We in have. In the same case. And said, unfortunately, we have. That's correct. Facts so, are different, right? Hmm? Facts are different. I can remember two or three cases already since I've been here where somebody bought a thing that was a two or three dwelling just based on the number of boxes. I don't remember one where a guy came in and had a permit issue. Somebody signed off and said, Permit. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. She was the last cookie. Because. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I know that's we black We've had conversations about how do we head this off downstairs at 417 to mm -hmm. keep, save people from this problem when it gets, you know, whether it's a permitting issue, get it done at permitting or whatever. Well, here I think, I mean, a lot of times it doesn't get caught until 
until they come through. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. so they go and you get a permit and they find out what's happened. Is yeah. the ordinance a solution? Oh, not. I think it should be addressed in transfer policy. I don't know where that is. Oh, transform? Well, yes, it's been only out there. Well, for like there's several hundred amendments. Can't tell you something heard so far. So like, remember? They could they, tear it down and build it. Yeah, so like, an ordinance is like that. Okay. No. Because it functions. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So. But I have uh, tried to come up with a way to approach the value, vacancy value program so that they don't put people in that spot because without checking the authorized use. This isn't, it doesn't happen every day, but it's Come I'm not I think there's things we can do internally and administratively to help solve that. Right. The buyers are relying on the description yes. that the city puts so in their put paperwork on the property. Right. Yes. Small print that says you have to comply with zoning. That's basically right. all they do. Right. And the buyers don't check behind it. No. And they look and they say, see the listing, it says, you know, three bedroom or three unit and they go and they visit the property and they look at it and it looks great okay you know i see meters i see this i see that it's in good condition oh i like the area and then they put money down on it um and they don't find out that there's a problem until after <coughs> but i'm purely empathetic i just like my cases we've set over the way we have with the exact same Case. Yes. All right. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I can think of I can I can think of two or three at least. Yeah, I know. I mean, oh, uh, we 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 don't yes. We don't have authority to do anything yeah. else. Yeah. We always hate that we do it yes. because we only get to pay her. Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, sometimes, and uh, I guess the only times when I remember where there would be opposition, um, I think some a couple of times down in um, Brooklyn, um, there was opposition. The communities wanted to see less multiple family in the neighborhood, and they wanted to see more single family. So they'd have these cases where properties would revert to single family status and they would show up and they'd say, you know, they, they, they would argue against um, uh, their reversion because they like, you know, the problem we have is we don't have enough homeowners and we want to see more. Matter of fact, I think it might have been the la our last hearing when Concerned Citizens of Refer Better Brooklyn was represented for that very thing. Yeah. 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 That's the name of the answer. She said how great we are. Yeah. Her name is Ann so Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, if, if, if <laughs> Yes, that's true. Send the message to the program, people running the program, say, "Hey, you guys need to fix this." Yes. Uh, yeah, it, that's a not a quick fix. Yes, no. But I just question how you know how can we improve something that we don't have the authority to Yes. And that's what how can we support yes. David in his effort to try to <laughs> head it off? That's the only and app. And it, well, I don't because it's a capitalist mm -hmm. argument. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're stuck. All right. <laughs> um, are there any others? That one, 
I was okay with it. Um, there had been some history of um, legal use as the grocery. Um, the prior tenant hadn't followed through with getting the permits, and that's what created the issue. Or well, we had no way of knowing why the permits weren't issued, yes, right. even though they had submitted a request to get the permits. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I'm claiming this last cookie, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to put my finger in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I have to talk through this whole thing, you can take advantage of that. Um, <clears throat> all right. Ready, Zach? Yes. 2013-418-916 North Broadway. Uh, I am a yes as to the request to use as a beauty salon and continue the remainder for a dwelling, one dwelling. Oh, yes. Agree. Yes. Um, 2014-64, 3600 Clipper Mill Road was postponed. 2014-166, 4030 West Garrison Avenue. Uh, I am a yes uh, with the um, this is with the restrictions uh, or conditions stated by the planning department um, uh, and also the restrictions on, uh, I guess, the prohibition on um, sale or consumption of alcohol on the premises, uh, no BYO um, alcohol, uh, no promoted events, and with the hour and the closing time limited to 12 a.m. Oh, he's got in his letter that he's going to have two security people. Two inside. Yeah, two inside and two outside. So, yeah, I told him to the representations of his application. Brian, I didn't ask this at the hearing, but I'm just curious. Um, what does that mean? Yes. I'm not so sure. Well, that's an enforcement issue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he shows a kitchen on his drawing, but he didn't show it all. It's going to be a restaurant. Mm-hmm. So when we draft it, we just want to make sure that it needs to be a restaurant. Yeah. As opposed to a dance hall. As opposed to Yeah, because I think that he's got a time before that at 9.30, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 2013-2014-358-47-11 and a half through 15 Hartford Road was postponed. 2014-364, 35 North Potomac Street. Um, I am a yes as revised to restaurant only. Yes. 2014-371, uh, 116 West Hamburg Street. Um, I am a yes um, as to um, all except for the height. He had a height of over 35 feet, and he said that he could shave it down probably, and he had like one of his floors was nine feet, the others were eight. Um, no, I said the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, 2014-502, 3800 Bell Avenue, I'm a yes. Yes, yes. 2014-507, 231 South Highland Avenue was postponed. 2014-508, 1909 through 13 Alisana Street uh, was by consent and incorporates a memorandum of understanding with the community association. 2014-511, 1247 West Lombard Street was postponed. 2014-512, 3900 Frederick Road was by consent with conditions stated by the Planning Department. 2014-513, 3200 
401 Millington Avenue. Um, I'm a no. No. 2014 514 38 uh, East Wheeling Street was by consent. 2014 515 3625 Fairview Avenue. Um, I'm a yes. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, I'm a no, sorry. Want to, but Yes. No. Um, 2014-516, 2109 Druid Hill Avenue was by consent. 2014-517, 2500 West Cold Spring Lane was withdrawn. 2014-519, 1215 East Fort Avenue was by consent with the conditions stated by the planning department. 2014-520, 2901 O'Donnell Street. Um, I am a yes with the reduction to um, two, two tops on O'Donnell Street. Quick, yes. Quick clarification. Uh, they, they were opposed to the to ten, to time restriction? Um, there was no, um, well, I guess the community association wanted the time restriction and they weren't, uh, they didn't agree to that, and it, what, it was a head scratcher, though, David, that we haven't established time limitations on any of those O'Donnell Street. The, uh, we haven't adopted the community meeting time limitations on any of the entire I don't know. So in the area in Canton, Canton always submits those mm -hmm. restrictions, those mm -hmm. guidelines, and there are other properties in Canton that you guys have incorporated those guidelines into your resolution. For the ones that Stanley has done, he has always objected to that provision, and you have always agreed to not find them like that. So then it becomes this thing where the ones right on the square don't have to abide by the other, like the other restaurants in Canton. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I mean, I have no idea. <coughs> I'm not, I don't care. Sure. Do mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <coughs> there are conditions by the planning department, right? As far as they have to be seated. Um, served by wait staff. Um, well, other places, but I think that, yes. I guess if they don't have it now and they have all proceeding, it would not yes. necessarily be fair to restrict them just because they're adding six months. Make a little note about that. Maybe, uh, well, and she put in the package Maybe specifically the other house? decisions from the other restaurants in the area who weren't restricted. Yeah, those are all yeah. standards. Mm -hmm. I think I looked them up the last time because we had this issue where it was on a consent packet and you guys incorporated that with guidelines and then they sent us the email. Maybe we could do uh, it. I'll do some research. The yeah. condition that they don't stay open any later than anyone else on that block. <laughs> well, can't do that. Does she ever go to the restaurant? My only comment would be visualizing the square. It's one thing to have <coughs> table service carry on to 2 o'clock on the square. Then when you talk about the side streets yeah. in the square, that's mm -hmm. where the problem is. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then on the other side of the back alley of this place is residential. Yeah, right. Right. Yes. And I remember hearing some testimony in a different case mm -hmm. from some people who were contesting this very issue. Mm -hmm. yes. The sound echoed up the mm -hmm. street. Yes. Yep. So maybe it's a question of. No restriction on O'Donnell Street, but a restriction on the Which is the side of the building. Yeah, that's just, just a thought. Yeah. They, but, it, but I don't think they have the existing restrictions on it. On, and I don't on, think it's a They may not. I'm no. saying, but the side for future reference, yeah. when you're right, for future reference, talking right. with the neighborhood associations about yeah. how to resolve this issue, I think that it's, <coughs> it's, it's a physics problem. It's where does the sound go? Does it get bounced off? And not all these restaurants are corner buildings. Some of them are just yeah. running on O'Donnell only. So they don't. We can, we can check. 
All right. Um, so I'm a yes as to the reduction to two two tops on O'Donnell Street, um, and that I, I guess that would reduce the request from 36 to 34 seats, right? 30, I had 32. 32. Yeah. Done. Uh, 2014 523 25 uh, 25 through 27 Fleet Street was by consent. Was oh, no, that's right. There was a no show. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, 2014 523 25 25 through 27 Fleet Street, Gina Campbell. Okay. Uh, 2014 525 3000 through 3004 um, uh, East Baltimore Street was by consent. 2014-526, 900 Southeast Avenue. Uh, I'm a yes with uh, the conditions stated by the uh, planning department. Yes. 2014-527, yes. 2305 Pressbury Street. Um, yeah, that was postponed. 2014-528, 1730 through 32 uh, Bank Street. Um, I'm a yes. And was there, um, yes. were there any conditions that you guys had for that one, Mark? I've just got that. Yeah, and it was within the, and I got that planning was okay, but I didn't have any conditions. Yeah. We didn't have any. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, 2014 529 2437 uh, Fleet Street uh, was by consent. 2014 530 3114 uh, Faith uh, Avenue uh, was by consent. 2014 531 1708 West Rogers Avenue uh, was by consent. Um, did something on site. Oh. With uh, conditions stated by the planning department, 2014-534, uh, 1181 through 85 James Street was postponed. 2014-535, 6300 Ivy Mount Road was by consent. 2014-536, 3423 through 49 Noble Street was postponed. 2014-537, 1563 through 67 North Fulton Avenue. Uh, I am a yes with the condition that the applicant um, uh, uh, meet with the applicable community association within 60 days, or attempt to meet with the yeah, community association within 60 days. Yeah. So at least 30. Like yeah. Um, yeah. For the purpose of presenting. Yeah, for the purpose of. They don't get an objection at this point, do they? No. Okay. If they just get information yeah. about what's coming. Yeah. Hopefully they can have that. Yeah, if they, if they want to have one, um, they can you know, reach an agreement. Uh, I guess if, you know, if they do uh, reach some, if they do reach an agreement, then you know, that'll be incorporated into our decision. So did you agree on 30 or 60? 60 days. Okay, 60 days. I agree. I just heard. I, I don't know who said it, but I heard someone say that. You're right. There's every other thing. 2014-540, 2319 uh, East Fairmont Avenue was by consent. 23, uh, well, 2014-541, 2321 uh, East Fairmont Avenue was by consent. 2014-542, 1026 Olive Street was postponed in 2014-550, uh, 3425 through 27 Keswick Road is postponed. <coughs> You guys make dinner on time. <laughs> yeah.